Uh, welcome back to beautiful Montreal, Quebec. This is what it looks like on a sunny day. Yesterday we had none of the sun. We've started out the day pretty well, but as you just heard momentarily ago, we've got a little rain in the area. Hopefully it's going to dissipate and we'll be all right. Take you back to qualifying. This was Marcus Ambrose. And think about this, folks. He was 1.2 seconds quicker than second place Carl Edwards. That's how good he was. He was in the second group, had some advantage because he had better visibility but still an impressive performance by kangaroo me and as we come topside the big question for rusty and andy is what do we do now we only had limited practice it was all in the rain and we're getting ready to go out dry track racing well i can guarantee you the drivers right now are real concerned about that marty it's a great question they didn't practice at all in the dry conditions it's dry right now they've been in the rain the whole entire time so their question is to their crew chiefs is this car going to handle how do i know that are we going to go back to notes from 2007 because it did rain last year so there's a lot of questions out there and my question for you crew chief is What's the setup? <laughs> a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. Uh, you know, these guys at Crew Chiefs in the garage area really don't know what to put in there. They don't know what they have. They're going to go, like Rusty said, off of historical notes from probably Watkins Glen. Uh, two years ago here in the dry, it might help you some, but they paved some of the corners here. So it, it, the track is going to act a little different in dry conditions. Throw that all in there, and we still don't know what the weather's <laughs> going to be. It still looks like it might rain, and then they still don't know what they have. All right, you see the starting field coming across the top of your screen. And remember this, the farthest back of road coach driver has ever started is 30th. That was Kevin Harvick here in Montreal in 2007. And remember, Carpentier, he is starting 40th. Let's talk to our in-race reporter. There he is, Ron Fellows. Hey, Ron Fellows, Rusty Wallace, ESPN. You got us? Copy, Rusty. Well, buddy, you won this race last year in the rain. You qualified yesterday in the rain. But today, you're pretty well on a dry racetrack. Are you concerned about the handling or what this car is going to do since you've had had no practice in the dry track? Well, there's 42 other guys that are just as worried. The, uh, the only uh, question for us is uh, damage the splitter a little bit. We'll see how that is in the dry, but uh, who knows what the conditions. It's been changing on a regular basis here. All right, buddy, we got an ESPN mailbag question, and it comes from Eric in Dawson Springs, Kentucky. The question is, what does it take to be a successful driver on a road course versus an oval track? Well, biggest difference is the... Uh, you're really busy with your feet. The, uh, you're, you're doing a lot of downshifting. Uh, your second gear corners, third gear corners, first gear corners here at Circuit We Should Live. Uh, that's probably the biggest difference. There's just such a, a wide variety of turns. And uh, as you can tell by the two guys in front of me, uh, the, the regulars do pretty well at this. As did uh, you, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. You got to have a great race out there, buddy. We'll be talking to you later. Good luck today. Now, Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Brian Campy. Thanks, Rusty. Hey, Brian, Andy Petrie in the booth. You got us? 10-4, loud and clear. Hey, Brian, with, uh, with limited practice that we've had and, and even the practice we've had has been on a semi-wet racetrack, how do you really decide what setup to run today? Well, we looked back at our notes from last year and uh, Ron's comments during the dry practice in the little part of the dry race and just adjusted on that a little bit and uh, it's kind of our best guess. Okay, uh, now that we practiced and qualified in a heavy rain yesterday, uh, are you worried about any of that, anything that happened yesterday with the car getting wet uh, today? Uh, we pretty much got that uh, squared away in the practice and the qualifying, so we're not real concerned about that. Okay, now how about, uh, Brian, how about fuel mileage? Do you have a good idea on what you're going to do there with, uh, you know, like there again, you don't have a lot of data to go by? Yeah, we're kind of making our best guess uh, with that as well. Um, we got some wet uh, weather last year, so we know we get in the wet, and uh, we had dry practice last year, so we're just going with those two. Okay, Brian, we appreciate you talking to us, and have good luck today. Good for it. Thank you, Andy. All right, obviously we have an onboard camera with our in-race reporter, Ron Fellows. But we also have several others for you to check out, as well as Max Pap is in the number one. He'll be going to the rear because he had some damage that they decided to repair. Justin Allgaier is also going to go to the rear because of a transmission problem. Stephen Light had a great qualifying effort. Jason Leffler was in that last group. He's going to be starting back in the mid-pack. Pole sitter Marcus Ambrose, Carl Edwards right alongside in row number one, and Stephen Wallace. In the middle, there is the man that's going to be over the wall for us, the 09 rear tire changer, Justin Fiedler. Yeah, there he is. He's going to be giving us some great views when they come in 
for pit stop on the 09. And 09, Barr said, had an engine change. They're going to the rear as well. And Tony Raines, the number 34, to the rear for a transmission change. So those are the four to the rears. Let's get the latest from pit lane. Shannon, you're up. Well, Marty, if Mother Nature decides not to cooperate today, the teams will have to make some adjustments to their car, some rain adjustments. NASCAR requires that the teams have certain rain gear. Now, the Joe Gibbs Racing Team went above and beyond. They have two windshield wipers. That's so the water will be cleared off the entire windshield. They also have rain -X. They have a defogger built into the front of their dash. And this will go inside the car. Brad Coleman will be able to squeeze off all of the condensation that's on the front. They also have two rear taillights. NASCAR only requires one, but this team has gone with two. They figured after last season running fourth and getting in a wreck during the rain, this team wants to be safe rather than sorry out here if it rains today. Jamie? Well, Shannon, no matter if we have wet or dry conditions, one thing is certain. Brakes will be of major concern for all the teams. Our own Rusty Wallace says that this track here is the hardest on brakes in all of North America. America. These guys are constantly checking and making sure that they have pressure. Now, the fastest straightaway is coming out of turn 12. They're going about 175 miles an hour. They have to drop it down to 40 miles an hour in an instant. Now, in that very section, if for some reason those brakes fail, there's nothing but a small guardrail and water. Just in case anybody ends up in that water, there are scuba divers there ready to recover. Dave Burns? Scuba divers, yikes. Okay, this is a road course, so what about fuel mileage after the gas men like Jeremy Ware here for Boris's said team get the car full of fuel, how long can they go? Andy talked about it a little bit earlier, somewhere around 30 laps under green and dry conditions. <laughs> That's changing as we speak. So that automatically makes it a two-stop race. Now, when they make their last stop, that is crucial, but it's also dictated by when they make their first stop. And so we look for those first stop guys to be happening anywhere from around lap 10 10 to lap 20. Could get interesting, and it's all changing as we speak, Marty. Yes, and the gray skies are getting grayer, and uh, so we'll keep our eyes on the weather again. As uh, you can see, Marcus Ambrose will be on driver's right. There they go through turn one. We're still under a pace lap, so we're going to squeeze in one more quick break before we go green here in Montreal. Stay with us. Gilles Villeneuve, we are uh, getting an extended pace lap as uh, NASCAR continues to look at the weather situation. But let's check out the quick set smart keys to the race. A couple of them we've already touched on. You know, you, you got to preserve brakes, weather preparation, but what about pit stops under green? Well, the pit stops under green are so critical at a road course because you, uh, you don't lose a lap when you pit. You just, you lose time on the track, and if the caution comes out, you're able to make all of that time back up if you don't pit. So that's what makes it so important to make those pit stops under the green flag. As you can see, they are heading down for turn number 10 with the lights still on. What, Rusty? I'll tell you guys, they're getting ready to get this thing going right now, but one thing is going to happen. They're going to have a mandatory caution on lap 10, and Andy, my question to you is, are they going to pit or are they going to stay out, you think? Well, that's a good question. I believe I would try to make a pit stop right there at lap 10, and then hopefully we could extend things out. And the weather is such an unknown right now. And if it does rain, the fuel mileage will go way up. Now, this mandatory caution you're throwing, these guys have had no practice whatsoever in the dry. They want to run 10 laps to see how these cars are going to handle. Throw the caution to lap 10. Let them adjust in their cars a little bit, guys. Are we really doing three pace laps? Like, I'm ready for the green. <laughs> <laughs> so are we, Kyle. But the, the good news is we'll squeeze in one more break because of the added pace lap, which means more green flag racing when we drop it just in a few moments here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Stay with us. It's going to be interesting. This NASCAR Canada Access Update is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Hello, Canada. Hope you're enjoying the coverage from Montreal. Now, we all know that succeeding in motorsport takes commitment on all different levels, from the drivers, the crew, the team owners. And success also takes a special commitment and relationship with sponsors. And a number of NASCAR's best get their support from GoDaddy.com. Series standouts such as Dale Earnhardt Jr., Brad Keselowski, and multi-race winner Mark Martin all receive support from GoDaddy.com. That support also allows them to race and compete at the top of their respective series. In 2008, Canadian Ron Fellows received the support of GoDaddy.com for the NASCAR Nationwide Series race in Montreal, and he went on to win.
GoDaddy.com, one of the top domain registrar websites in the world, is committed to the world of motor racing, not only to promote and market drivers, but connect with fans and customers that also show a passion for motorsports. They also show their commitment by bringing you the NASCAR Napa Auto Parts 200 here on TSN. So make sure you visit GoDaddy.com to register your .ca domain today. And to see their commitment, GoDaddy.com brings to racing and their drivers. Tune in to NASCAR races all season long right here on TSN. This NASCAR Canada Access was brought to you by GoDaddy.com, the world's number one domain registrar. Get your .ca domain name today at GoDaddy.com. Real Value is offering a quality vehicle that you can feel confident with. That's why Canadians voted Toyota as Reader's Digest's most trusted brand of cars and SUVs. And Real Value is having the choice of vehicle that fits your lifestyle and budget, like our new models with four-cylinder options. And now get 0% financing and job loss credit protection on select models. Discover the many meanings of real value today, tomorrow, and always at your Toyota dealer or visit toyota.ca. Sunday Night Football on TSN2. Jay Cutler returns to the Mile High City with the Bears as they get set for a preseason tilt with the Broncos. Bears, Broncos, tonight at 8 on TSN2. Sparks are flying on the track, and the sparks are flying off in the distance. And the rain is falling. Get your DVRs running, folks. For the first time ever in NASCAR history, one of the top three series will race on rain tires. Marcus Ambrose has checked out on this field by eight seconds. Marcus Ambrose, your leader, having trouble. He goes too fast into pit lane, has to serve a pass-through penalty. Despite all this, Marcus is in third. Oh, it's over? They just said it's over. Congratulations are going to go to Ron Fellows. He picks up his fourth career Nationwide Series win. All right, guys. Thanks for your hard work. We'll uh, see you in a little while. 10-4, buddy. Hope to see you right here to our left. So, <laughs> That was Ron Fellows just a few moments ago talking to his crew. And, uh, yeah, Victory Lane would be a sweet visit for anybody in this 43-car field because they certainly have earned it with the weather they practiced and qualified in yesterday. And one guy who we didn't even know for sure he was going to make it was the 28 of Kenny Wallace. And uh, Kenny, who turned 46 last uh, Sunday, there he is, the Herminator, as uh, he's coming into view. And over 5,000 fans. There he goes, right underneath our camera. 5,000 fans donated $20 a piece to raise the 100,000 that they needed to come north. And boy, he has been so grateful, telling everybody he could up here how great the fans are. Uh, Kenny Walsh does have some great fans, and uh, some of his closest friends are his fans and paid to get him up here and see him race on the road course. All right, our pole sitter is Marcus Ambrose. Let's get an update uh, with his crew chief, Dave Burns. I think you're there. Uh, yeah, hey, Marty, how sure were you that Ambrose was going to show up? <laughs> pretty, very, pretty sure, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. They've got a chance to win today. Frank, what have you guys uh, decided about this weather here and uh, the possibility of growing green right now? Well, you know, yesterday we practiced all in the rain all day and qualified in the rain. Now we're in dry conditions, and um, we came here, you know, in dry conditions, and we stayed that way. But we'll just have to wait and see what the weather does. And, you know, if the weather comes, they're going to switch back over to wet. So we've been talking setup, and Andy Petrie, you know, flat kind of said it's been a struggle to know what to put on the car. You guys are dry, but you would have to make some major changes if it went wet. We had to switch all the stuff we did this morning that we were allowed to do. Just put it all back, just like we qualified. So um, we'll just have to wait and see what Mother Nature has for us. All right, we're waiting it out. Now, that's not an enormous list, is it, Andy? I mean, it's a few things that you can do to really help the car if you go from dry to wet. Well, NASCAR's going to bring them down pit road, Dave, and they're going to let them do a lot of things to the car, uh, you know, putting the windshield wipers on. They can, they can change some things uh, as far as taking rubbers out of springs and unhooking rear sway bars. Uh, the few things they can do that'll help the car handling in the wet conditions, uh, the main thing is, is to put all the equipment on so they can be, see uh, to drive in the rain and put the rain tires on. Uh, naturally, but uh, 
It is a, it's a, it's a, it's a across the board thing. NASCAR lets everybody do it. They bring them down pit road and then turn it over to a wet condition. All right, just past the top of the hour. If you're tuning in, I'm Marty Reed, along with Rusty Wallace, Andy Petrie, Dave Burns, Jamie Little, and Shannon Spake, and our entire ESPN crew. As we've had some extended pace laps, we're getting ready to go green for the first of 74 laps. We practiced and qualified yesterday in the rain. It is dry right now. We had a brief little sprinkle, a little shower, and uh, you can see the cars trying to warm up the tires as we are getting ready here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve for race number 25 of the 2009 Nationwide Series schedule. Marty, these guys are really trying to figure out what they need to expect at the start of this race. They've had no practice whatsoever in dry conditions. It's all been rain. The keys right here, though, they know is that the they're going to have a problem with the brakes. they got to take care of these brakes. This is the hardest track in North, North America on brakes. they got to stay on the course. If they get off course, caution flags are going to come out for them. They're going to go to the back of the field. Problems are going to happen. Fans are getting on their feet here on the front straightaway across from our broadcast position. It is Marcus Ambrose on the left side of your screen, our pole sitter, Carl Edwards, right alongside. They are coming out of turn number 14, down the front straightaway, race number 25 of the 2009 NASCAR Nationwide Series from Circuit. Gilles Villeneuve is green. sliding one off course gets it back on no harm no foul and you Kyle gets shoved wide through the turn two and you've got to watch that turn two just like you said guy because boy that was a big problem back in 2007 now they're in the slow portion of the course the s's this is where it's kind of following the leader they kind of got to be careful through this area and these are the fastest laps they've run all weekend it's the first time they've been on a dry track so here they go. They're piling down in these corners, and uh, they don't know what they've got till they get there. These are some really key laps right now, because like we said earlier, there's going to be a mandatory caution at lap 10 where these guys can come in. If these cars are handling bad because of no practice, they can adjust on them. Saw the 10 car Justin Marks. There is the five of Ron Fellows taking a look underneath for second place. He's going to take the position on Carl Edwards. Jacques Villeneuve in the 32, not able to follow. Wow, look at how much curb that Ron Fellows is catching there through those corners. Well, here comes another key area right now. I see Antonio Perez off the track, but we're coming down into the hairpin right now. This is a key area to make some passes. Take Whoa, a look at the yellow look car. At all the smoke. That's the Jack Bellanew, a good classic pass. He's got the inside line on Carl Edwards, and it looks like Fellows' brakes are not working too well. Like the bias is not quite right. Saw a lot of smoke, and he's uh, under attack. Well, he, he locked the wheels up big time getting in the hairpin. That was a big distraction for the two guys racing behind him. You can see all these cars making it through here without incident. You go from about 160, 170 miles an hour down to about 40 in that corner. Yeah, down to about 40 miles an hour. Now they're accelerating to about 175 miles an hour, guys, into turn 13 right there as they exit turn 14 now, coming back to the start-finish line. What it means is we get to go on board with uh, Ron Fellows. You can see Ambrose has uh, opened up a sizable lead about 1.7 seconds. It is Fellows second, Villeneuve third, Edwards fourth, and Brad Coleman is now in fifth. Now, one concern I got, guys, is this five car around Fellows right here. You see the air dam is tore up on it. That happened yesterday in qualifying. Will that hurt his performance? I think it really could hurt the performance as this race goes on. Caught the tail end of Kyle Busch getting off track in the 98, uh, got around him. So Menard takes over the spot. Oh, damage to the 18. Yeah, he's pushing a little bit hard right here, and it's uh, it's really hard to not do that at the beginning of a race, but Kyle Busch is losing spots. Here's Mark Green going around. So Mark Green takes it off in turn numbers uh, one and two area. Now uh, back to Kyle's situation. Question is, is that uh, doesn't look like it's rubbing against the wheel, so shouldn't uh, be a major issue. Now it looks fine right here. That damage to the headlight won't hurt him at all. Boy, look at Colin Brown in the 16. He goes right around Kyle on the low side, takes the spot away. So Brown, who finished third in the truck race on Friday night, move him up a couple of spots. And they're entering turn eight right there. Excellent out of eight. And that corner right there is a good passing zone also. But boy, I tell you what, if you get too aggressive, you can spin that car out there. And these guys are all aware of that. Jason Leffler, who started this race back in the middle of the pack, trying to work his way up as well. He's uh, got Kyle Busch right in front of him. Look out, fellas. About the three inches of between all three cars there for a second. That is turn 10 at the far end of the racetrack. Marty, one thing these guys want to do is set their passes up for these passing zones. Take a look at Carl Edwards getting into 13 now, 175 miles an hour, Whoa. down to like 70. Look at that 32 car jump over that curve. 
Saw Carl give him a little wave out to the uh, side, but he's not uh, surrendering the position as they come down the front straightaway to complete lap number two, heading down into turn one. There's a little bit of aggressive driving going on right now. Jacques Vellano, probably he's been told that these brakes in these cars don't hold up too good, so he's gonna have to not be so aggressive like he's been right now, Andrew, else he's gonna burn these things right off this car. Well, one thing he's thinking right here, if he could get by Carl Edwards and get a little bit of gap out there, he might be able to save the brakes a little bit. He's trying to get this spot now as quick as he can without using too much brake. While all this is going on, we can tell you Marcus Ambrose has opened up a 2.6 second lead in two laps. My question for you is with this mandatory caution coming up, is there any reason for him to push that hard? Well, yeah, I think track position is so important, and you see how hard it is to pass. I mean, now Carl Edwards looks like he's got a clear advantage over Villeneuve. And I guess one of the questions is, is he really pushing real hard? Is a car just that good? We know he's that good. Maybe it's just running that fast easy. And if it's doing that, hey, let the baby go. Get out front. Whoa, Colin Brown, and it looks like he's got a major issue. Yeah, he's got some oil smoke from under the car. He's pulling off the racetrack. So he's Brown. got a transmission, engine, something wrong here. See a little trail of oil under the car. Going to get a full course caution here on lap number three, our first of the day. He was running 10th, and you saw how easily he got around Kyle Busch, but all of a sudden, something lets go in the 16th 3M Ford. Well, Marty, there's a lot of shifting going on there, a lot of shift, a lot of revs in the engines. It could be anything. You see the trail of oil behind the car. Andy, that could be anything, the engine or the transmission. Well, he had two cars that had transmission issues during qualifying, the 34 of Tony Raines and the 12. Well, we see a lot of oil run out of the front of the car there. It probably could be an engine problem. I mean, this road course racing is extremely hard on the equipment. You see all this right here coming out from under the front part of the car. Uh, I don't think the transmission holds that much oil. I don't yeah, think I it does. I that, we know what that's, problem is right there. Yeah, that's the engine, that's for sure. Jamie, what's the latest from pit lane? Well, just before you guys saw the 16 with all the smoke, he said, guys, I lost oil pressure. I think I'm blowing up, and then boom, it let go. So it looks like his day is over. All right. Tough break for Colin Brown. As we mentioned, he finished third in the uh, truck race Friday night up in Chicago. Made the long trip down here just to get soaking wet yesterday, and one now he's out in lap three. And one of the struggles on road courses is you're turning the left and right, and that's a hard thing to keep the oil next to the pickup in the tank and uh, and keep that oil pressure solid. And I, like I said, he lost a little pressure, and once you lose it, even for just a little bit, it can scuff those bearings, and next thing you know, it'll explode. Well, pit road is closed, so everybody's going to have to take another lap around. That'll give us a chance to take a break. And Marcus Ambrose, who had a 2.6 second lead, well, that's all gone away as we're under our first caution here in Montreal. On, on the 16 of Colin Brown as he has lost a motor here at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve on lap number three, our first caution coming out very early in this race. And Colin had moved up to 10th position. And uh, we saw earlier in the race uh, the five car of Ron Fellows having problems smoking the tires going down into number 10. And uh, this is what we picked up on the radio. Rick Bias, I must have gone too much to the front. A flat spot of the front, that first lap into the hairpin. Um, has it been a problem for you so far? No, uh, just a nasty vibration. Okay, 10 4. Um, that may change our plans a little bit. Keep me uh, up to date on how big of an issue that is. All right, a Andy, he talked about brake bias. How can he uh, make the adjustment? Well, Marty's got a knob right inside the car. It's right here, this blue knob. He can spin that knob right and left and, and change that bias from front to rear. And they, uh, they changed that bias a little bit for that rain we had yesterday in the qualifying session, and he over-adjusted it uh, back for the dry, and they didn't have any dry practice. They really didn't know where to put it. All right, we do have a taker, and maybe uh, Ron Fellows wants some fresh tires after uh, possibly yeah, flat spotting. I mean, he flat spotted the heck out of those front tires, so he's probably just going to go ahead and bite the bullet here, go ahead and get tires on the car. Uh, you see Justin Marks also making a pit stop. There we go. Working on the air dam right now. I think that's what they need to do. It's a good move. They're going to try to get this air dam fixed, give this car some more downforce, because, guys, they've got to start tailback no matter what anyway now since they're on pit road. And we saw them having those pieces ready, and we were wondering, we were speculating, would you have enough time? Jamie, let's uh, send it down to you. And it is a precautionary measure. Brian Campy said, I don't want to risk getting a flat tire because you you uh, flat spotted him, as we heard him on the radio. So he's just coming in four tires. Of course, they can't take fuel until after lap 10. You see the valence. That was broken yesterday. 
yesterday in qualifying. He went through the grass. He mowed the grass down. They opted not to change it because they would have had to drop to the back of the field. So now you see them just uh, fixing that now with dry conditions, guys. He was saying this could be a problem for them and slowing him down. Well, it, it would have been a great decision to leave it alone had the rain come back, correct? Well, his car was fine. I mean, he, he actually could run pretty fast, and I don't think they would change this uh, front valence had they not flat spotted the tires. I think the tires were the deciding factor to bring him down pit road. Hey, and while we're here and we're the only ones here, let's go ahead and change this front valence too because it takes almost four minutes uh, to run around here under caution. They'll have plenty of time to do a lot of work. Well, let's go back to yesterday and show you exactly what happened to Ron and what caused that valence to end up with all that front damage. He got in here just a little bit hot, locked the brakes up, get, gets into this gravel, and you see how he's run, trying to run across here and get back on the racetrack, goes across that little paved section and through that grass, and there's just a lot of bumps, and, and it just took its toll on that front skirt. Yeah, you're exactly right. That little last little bump as he come off the track, out of the sand, into the grass, it broke it. But right now, they're doing the right thing. They're taking their time. They have plenty of time to fix this. This is a long way around this 2.709 road course. So they're taking their time. They're fixing it. And I really think that maybe that air dam being broke, Andy, created no downforce in this car. And that might have caused these tires to lock up on them getting in that corner. Well, it definitely didn't have the downforce. All right, guys, we've also got uh, the 10 car of Justin Mars yeah, in the pitch. Ready? What's going on there? Yeah, yeah Marty, he's been riding around down on the right front of that car because uh, the sway bar arm was either broken at the heim joint or had uh, come loose, and I'm just trying to get a peek. It doesn't look like they replaced it, so it may have just come unhooked, and the sway bar and the right front suspension was dragging on that car. Justin Marks on pit road. I believe they fixed it, and he'll go back out. Yeah, that's something he had to get fixed. That sway bar is such a critical part of the suspension, and uh, uh, it would slow you down a tremendous amount not to have it hooked up. Wendy, a question I got for you. We saw last year where Jacques Bellardeuve actually unhooked the sway bar when the rain came so the car would handle better. Is there a chance they unhooked this yesterday and just simply forgot to hook it back up? <laughs> well, I guess it could be. Uh, you would think they would handle those details, though, in the uh, pre-race when they had they gave uh, were given the opportunity to make those changes. Well, you see Ron Fellows has got all his repairs taken care of, so there it is, the front valence back in place. So he'll take his place near the rear of this field as uh, we've got a few cars that have uh, come off the track. We'll update you on everybody when we get back here at Circuit Jill's Villeneuve. Ah, uh, Monday Night Football preseason styles coming up on Monday with the countdown starting at 7 and the coverage at 8 on ESPN. It is Brett Favre back with the Minnesota Vikings. That sounds really weird saying that, but there he'll be against the Texans of Houston. That's Monday Night Football on ESPN. Now, we pointed out the damage on the 18 of Kyle Busch. We picked up the spot where we think that uh, he sort of got that uh, nose punched in just a little bit. And it was when Andy Lally was uh, making quick work of him. Here is Andy in the zero car. He drives right by Kyle Busch on the outside into that turn and then back back uh, on the uh, left left turn there. Looks like he didn't like that, did he? He didn't yeah, like that. <laughs> and Kyle got a good bite off that corner, went up and hit him a little bit. Now. You know, they do have this mandatory caution coming at lap 10. People do not have to come down at lap 10, but if he does, I'll guarantee you they'll put some probably bare bond on that big hole at Kyle Busch's car try to fix it. That is the number one of Max Pappas. Now, if you remember, he had to go to the rear of the field because he had some damage from qualifying. They decided to fix it. Max picked up 23 spots in the first two laps and uh, is now picked up a total of 26 with a couple of guys going behind the wall. Let's update you there. He had a best career finish, a third here back in 07 in the number one car. And there you can see Barasset has also picked up 19 spots. Justin Allgaier following right behind with 18. But he's got radio issues, right, Shannon? That's right. Since the start of the race, Marty, they uh, the team cannot hear Max. Now, Max can hear the team, so they're using hand signals out the window. If you see Max Pappas put his hand out the window and hit the bottom of the door, that means that the car is pushing. If he hits the top, he's having a problem with forward bite. They will switch the radio, hand him a radio into the car and let him try to fix that during the competition call. But right now, no communication for Max Pappas. There you see him waving. <laughs> yeah. do, do they know the gestures that an Italian can make inside a race car? Because <laughs> I've seen some of them. Uh, let's update a couple of things. First off, how about the starting parks? Tommy Hubert was off before the end of lap one. Brian Keselowski's gone behind the wall. Chris Cook 
Jeffrey Earnhardt, we're checking up on that one. We didn't think that was going to be a starting part. And, of course, Colin Brown was the reason we are under this extended caution because they're still trying to get the oil dry to get that uh, mess cleaned up. Marty, I guess I'm just really still blown away about how many positions that Max Pappas has picked up in this start of this race. I mean, he's up right now 26 positions since the start of this race. And I can tell you, Mad Max is his nickname. That's what we all call him down here. He is re this race is everything in the world to him. He was really upset about his bad qualifying run yesterday. He had a qualifying that really bad rain. But he wants to win this thing for these guys so bad and himself it's unreal well other guys to keep an eye on when we come back and we will will be patrick carpentier he's now 19th bar said is up to 21st so as we continue this uh, extended caution we'll step aside one more time hopefully by the time we get back it'll be back to green flag racing here at circuit jills villeneuve Back here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, we talked about how the Quebec people follow their racers. Here they are, Villeneuve third, Ranger sixth, Dumoulin 10th, Carpentier 19th, and Tagliani is in 20th. And we had a chance to talk to Jacques about how these fans get so crazy support behind their drivers. The crowd is very enthusiastic. It's a... Uh crowd is close to the track. Normally on a road course, the grandstands are quite far, but here it's a little bit, a little bit like a like racing downtown and uh, so, so you, you can see the crowd and you can feel the vibe it's uh, it's great it's a great atmosphere and if that 32 car takes the race lead every corner will erupt as he goes by we can guarantee it lights are out on the pace truck we're going to go back to green flag racing we are told from nascar they will still do the competition caution at lap 10 but uh, you will not be able to take fuel until that point. So nobody could take fuel in this early stop. Yeah, if somebody's really in trouble right now with handling or an issue like that, they might stop. But else, I mean, we've got four more laps to go before this caution flag comes out. And Andy, in my mind, that's going to create a lot of confusion. You're going to stay out. You're going to pit. What are you going to do? It's an opportunity to get on pit road and kind of get a freebie. But the thing I don't like, if you come down pit road right now, you're going to come back out at the back of this pack if those guys stay out. And man, track position is everything here. Well, Ron Fellows is going to restart the 30 in 36 position. Uh, Jamie, what's the latest on Jeffrey Earnhardt? Well, what happened on lap two? He lost third and fourth gear. Jeffrey Earnhardt in the seat right now. His dad, Kerry Earnhardt, putting a brand new transmission in this car. This is the only race he has scheduled the rest of the year. They're trying to make the most of it. They're, of course, talking about being back in the car, but they're trying to get back out there and get some more laps for young Jeffrey Earnhardt. Yeah, we knew he was not a starting park, so uh, we'll hope that uh, they can get back in. We're getting ready to go back to Green Flag Race. Racing with Marcus Ambrose, Carl Edwards, Jacques Villeneuve, Brad Coleman in fourth, and Antonio Perez in his second nationwide start in fifth. Here we go. And he's double foul Reese towards force them down into turn one side by oh, side. No. Look out. And boy, they got a line up coming off of turn two. That's Michael Odette in the 15 sort of sliding off at the back of the pack there. It looks like everybody's going to survive. There's the five car. Ron Fellows trying to fight his way back. The 18 also has got his hands full right now. Man, Kyle he's had Bush. his hands full uh, since the start of the race. Kyle Bush has. Okay, these guys are getting real aggressive on these restarts, really aggressive. Also, I will tell you, these tires are not up to air pressure yet. Still cause these guys to slip and slide around a little Look bit. Look at Carl looking at the lead here. Flying down this long straightaway. Okay, he's going to try to outbreak Ambrose. Oh, here we go. Can he make it stick? Looks like he does. We saw smoke from the 11 car in the back of Andrew Ranger. He holds on as well. We got a new race leader. That was a big move Carl Edwards made to get the lead from Ambrose. Boy, down the hairpin corner right now. This is another good passing zone. You see Antonio Perez trying to take a look at Brad Coleman right there. Gets back in line right now. But that is a spot where you can really make a good pass. And now they're coming off of turn 11, and heading John, down this long straightaway. Jean-Francois Dumoulin makes the move on the inside in the 23. Dave, give us an update on our uh, second place car now, Marcus Ambrose. Yeah, not entirely happy with his car right now, guys. When it changes directions, he says it feels too soft. They plan to put spring rubbers in the rear springs of that car when they pit. These two have sort of opened up about a three-tenth of a second lead over third place, Jacques Villeneuve. 
and a little bit further back we're going to check in now on Max Pappas. Pappas has moved up to 10th. This guy is on a mission. Boy, look at that car too. That nose is right on the ground. That thing is digging. It's handling really good and Max is just driving the wheels off that baby. Andy my question for you is is he going to be abusing the brakes too much early here trying to get all this track position back? Well, the answer is yes. He is abusing the brakes. He's abusing the whole car. You can see the, the front tire is almost in a lockup situation into every corner. So, yeah, he's using a lot of car, but he's made, he's getting something for it. He's getting a lot of spots. While we were watching Max, Marcus Ambrose gets back around, retakes the race lead. So we've had our uh, second lead change here in less than a lap. I, so I wonder how he feels about his car now. Yeah, he's probably pretty good with it now. I've been looking at both these cars, Andy, Marcus's car and Carl Edwards, and boy, the nose on that Marcus Ambrose car is still real high in the front end compared to Carl's. And uh, he to be carried the nose just a little bit off the corners. And that's one of the things when you run soft springs, if you don't run a lot of shock, a lot of rebound with that, it will carry the nose under that hard acceleration in the lower gears, in second and third gear. Let's go back and show you how uh, Marcus got the back into the lead. At least he gets in a turn one oh, right there. Oh, oh. just overdrove the corner a little bit here. Paid the price. Come on, keep coming, keep coming. Clear, clear, clear. Good move. All right, so one little bobble by Carl, and Marcus says thank you very little and moves on. Well, Carl caught him and passed it once to see if he could do it again. He made a mistake. He's got this baby back on track and looking good. He's got to drive smooth laps right now. Notice how the guys are clipping the rumble strips. Go on board, and you can see the Carfax uh, telemetry. Yeah, you can see right through this section of the racetrack, there's going 130 plus miles an hour. So they go into turn one, catch a little bit of that curb, sometimes catch a lot of it. That's where Carl lost the lead a lap ago, and you can see Marcus Ambrose just driving away from Carl Edwards now. Yeah, heaven help the field if he gets this car sorted out. Hey, take a look at that. Look how narrow this course is through here. Talked about it's kind of followed a little leader through this area. Marcus is doing a good job of negotiating that. You can't see around the corners of this racetrack. You got to memorize what's going on and anticipate. But if somebody spins out or crashes in front of you and you can't see him, you just got to rely on your spotters at that point. Well, we are approaching the bottom of the hour, and uh, we welcome anybody who's just joining us here at uh, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve as we are working uh, lap number 10 of 74 with your race leader, Marcus Ambrose. Second place, Carl Edwards, Jacques Villeneuve, the hometown favorite, in third, Brad Coleman fourth, and Antonio Perez in fifth. You can see all five cars right there. And we are approaching a competition caution because these guys had absolutely no practice in the dry. Look out. See Andrew Ranger racing hard there with Antonio Perez. And here comes Kyle Busch on the outside of Ranger. That, that move's not too good right there. Not going to work on the outside through that corner. Kyle Busch wouldn't surprise me if he won this race one bit. I mean, it seems like every time he goes to a new racetrack, he figures it out. Yeah, one thing, he, you know, he's really just figuring this track out today for the first time because he hasn't had any, you know, any practice with this much grip out there. So it's really been a learning process for these first nine laps for Kyle Busch. Brad Coleman, you saw there in the 20 car, that's his last race in that car for the year, at least as it's scheduled right now. Running in fourth position, take a look as you can see, heading down, that's Andrew Ranger trying to get underneath Antonio Perez. He's got him on the first corner and he makes it stick through two. Here comes Kyle on the outside. Can he get it done? No. He's just looking for some room to race. He's a little faster than these cars in front of him, but it, he doesn't have the preferred groove, so he's just trying anything he can try. And right now, there's gaining knowledge, guys. This is the first time they've been practicing in this dry condition, like you said. You know, talking about Kyle Busch again, the longer he runs, he'll keep figuring this thing out, and then he can tell his crew what he really needs for these upcoming pit stops. You can see Ron Fellows now. He's worked his way up to the 88 car, Brad Keselowski. Now, Fellows has picked up 14 positions so far from the back of this field, just like you said, and he's, he's making some ground right now. Justin Allgaier right behind him, and uh, Allgaier not real experienced on the road courses, and he may be able to learn something following Fellows. Yeah, this would be a great opportunity for Allgaier to really learn something from our master at this kind of racing. And we're getting the uh, caution back at start-finish line, so everybody will give their cars a breather, and we'll see who the takers will be into pit lane for this competition, yellow. Our first caution lasted four laps. Well, just remember, you know, you saw Ron Fellows in the pits earlier, and he changed tires, fixed that nose, but they did not get to put fuel in it because it was not legal to do that until right now when this co competition caution comes out. Now they can put fuel in. 
Question will be, will they do it and give up the track position again? I guess it would depend on how many people come. What do you think? Well, I think you'll see a lot of them down pit road here. And I, I think it's a gamble if you pit right here because it is outside your pit window. But you see a lot of cars getting ready. Here's Max Pappas' crew. And the, those brakes may be on fire when he comes <laughs> into pit lane. <laughs> Several teams, at least they're set up now, whether they actually come. You know, these nationwide cars get about four and a half to five miles per gallon on an oval track. We're, we're just flat road course, and Andy and I were hearing this morning, they're only getting about 3.8 to four miles per gallon, which, uh, you know, we thought they'd be hit pit road a lap 10. Oh, it stays <laughs> like Marcus. Marcus made the move, but then decided not to. Yeah, if they're, if they're getting fuel mileage, like close to four and a half and five, they can pit on lap 10 and make it. But right now, if only four miles a gallon, you can't do it. All right, so Jacques Villeneuve stays out along with Ambrose. And it uh, looks like Carl Edwards is in as first and Kyle Busch as well. And he's going to be the first to make pit road. So uh, let's go to Jamie. Well, Kyle Busch was holding his own, as you guys said, despite the damage on the left front that happened early in the race. They said they weren't really concerned because Kyle said car is handling good. So they're coming in. You see him working on the right side there. It's going to be four tires. You see the damage on the right side of the hood there around the headlight area. Four tires for Kyle Busch, Dave. And, Jamie, they're going to take a good look at Carl Edwards' car for uh, any type of damage or anything else. They are not going to change tires. Says the balance is good on that car. It's a little bit loose in the right-handers to start, but the balance has come to him. And as you can see, he's already leaving pit road. So as everybody makes uh, their stop that did decide to come in, we can tell you it was uh, Ambrose Villeneuve, Brad Coleman, Antonio Perez, and Max Pappas stayed out. So Pappas moves all the way up to fifth here on lap number 11 fellas. that's from the dead rear of the field to top five great so, job by max pappas right behind is uh jason leffler he started in the middle of the pack he is in sixth as uh, he stayed out as well in fact the top 12 stayed out and carpentier moves up into seventh position now and we're hearing uh, we will get a penalty on alex tagliani another one of the uh, quebec natives as uh, he was too fast entering pit lane, so he's going to get the penalty. I'll tell you, if, if too fast entering, that, that entry at pit road will really suck you in there, Marty, because you're running 175. you got to get on the brakes, and there's that cone right there in front of you. Remember, it did it to Marcus Ambrose. Remember, he had that, like, uh, eight-second lead, came into pit lane, cost couldn't get it slowed down, year. cost him the victory. Right there is the mark, and he slid across that line too fast and got nailed for speeding, came back to finish third. Now take a look at this, guys. You come down this long straightaway, like I said, 175 miles an hour, on the brakes, down to second gear, and there's the line. You gotta get it slowed down or else you get busted, and a lot of them just slide across it. So as we continue under this caution, we're uh, taking a look at the pit, and everybody down through the top 14 spots stayed out. That includes Ron Fellows, who is now in 13th position. So. Things will get interesting again when we go back to Green Flag Racing here at Montreal. Under our second caution here at the Napa Auto Parts 200 in Montreal gives us a chance to talk about the Nationwide Series next week. Uh, it's Degree V12 300 Atlanta Saturday night, 6.30 Eastern under the lights on ESPN2. And then the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, also from Atlanta, presented by Pennzoil. That's next Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And the biggest weekend of drag racing, the Mac Tools NHRA U.S. Nationals, presented by Lucas Oil. Qualifying next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. and 5 Eastern on ESPN2. And then final eliminations Monday, Labor Day, 1 Eastern on ESPN2. So we've got your racing cover for you. Right now, as uh, we are still under this second caution, Marcus Ambrose, the race leader. There is Ron Fellows as they are getting form back up. Of course, he has got uh, four road course wins, three of them at Watkins Glen. The first one came back in 1998 here at the Nationwide Series, as everybody was happy for Ron then. They were even happier in 2000 when he made it number two at the Glen. And then in 2001, he took home number three. And then it was last year here at the uh, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve where he picked up his fourth road course win. He has two in the truck series as well for six total. And that race last year, 48 laps instead of 74. Let's talk to him. Ron Fellows, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Go ahead, Rusty. 
Hey, buddy, you got yourself all the way up to 13th position. You got your air dam fixed. What's that thing driving like now? Well, that uh, shark nose jaws thing uh, wasn't helping us under braking, and that uh, first and second lap, I flat spotted the tires. It kind of helped make the decision to change that blitz front splitter. Like, Passing all guys did an awesome job. And, yeah, we're, uh, we knew we had that competition yellow coming at lap 10, so we'll see what we got now. Oh, so you really think that probably the nose being tore up is what caused your brake problem, and does it feel a lot better right now to you since you got it fixed? Yeah, it would definitely hurt the uh, stopping more than uh, cornering, the, the downforce, getting that, that uh, front brake bite. All right, buddy, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Have a great race, man. Thank you. All right, let's uh, reset it for you. It is Marcus Ambrose in front as uh, Jacques Villeneuve will be in second and get ready for the Quebec natives to really go crazy if he can somehow get the lead away from Ambrose. Brad Coleman running third, Antonio Perez fourth, Max Pappas fifth, Jason Leffler, and Patrick Carpentier in seventh, and Barr said has moved up to eighth. So uh, a lot of guys that uh, in the front, the top 17 did not take any fuel. From 18 on back, they have full tanks, so they've got 10 laps advantage. Yeah, so the strategy is kind of playing itself out here. There's a, car, a lot of cars that pitted on that lap 10 caution that are going to gamble on maybe get, either getting rain or getting something to extend their fuel mileage. A lot of caution flags, which are laps that we've had already, uh, could extend this where they could still make it on one stop. Well, and actually, I should correct myself. It was really only six laps under green because they had the four laps uh, of, during the first caution when Colin Brown went out. Now the strategy is very important right now. There's no doubt about that. But I, I would guess these guys could stay out of maybe about another five laps and hit pit road under green and get inside their window to make it. Probably about five more laps. Here they go. Well, and Jeffrey Earnhardt, we can tell you, is back out on track. He is nine laps down in 40th. So we have 39 cars still on track as we get ready to go back to green flag racing here in race number 25 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And boy, Ambrose gets a good jump. so critical to get a good jump here you see how you make this left hand turn first and then the right and if you can have a clear track in that first turn it really helps a lot look at here see Coleman now pulling his way into second spot and watch Max Pappas as he's looking to take the position as well there's Patrick Carpentier our first real look at him since the uh, starting of the race hey Max's car is just really handling well right now this is a good guy to watch coming through the field I mean He's just bulldozed. He's 38 positions now. He's picked up. He started tailback. He's got himself all the way up to fourth. I like the way that car's handling. Shannon, what's the latest on that number one car? Well, according to the sign language from Max Pappas, the car's a little bit loose, but it's all right. But guys, right now, the team is contemplating not even changing the radio. They said, as long as Max can hear us, we're good. Of course, it's ruining our experience. We would love to hear Max Pappas over the radio all race long. But right now, the car's good, and they're able to communicate using uh, hand signals. Yeah, one thing you don't want to do is get too preoccupied with fixing something that may not hurt you as much as you think. I, I know the radios are very critical, but if you get so preoccupied with changing the radios, you can get completely out of your rhythm and uh, and then play catch up the rest of the race. So yeah. I, I think that's a good decision. Andy, we watch, I totally agree with you, but on the other hand, we have watched radios really play havoc for some people. Take a look at Tony Stewart last week at Bristol. Lost his radio early, had a lot of problem getting that car figured out, and honestly never did. Well, one guy who doesn't have a problem with his car is Marcus Ambrose. As uh, you can see, he's already picked up a two-tenths of a second lead over Brad Coleman. And, boy, Coleman really could use a good finish here. This is his last ride scheduled for this car. And he put some pressure on himself. He said, in this stretch, I should win a race, and he hasn't. He's a good road racer, though. So he got a little damage, though, on the left front. I think by the time this one's over, almost everybody's going to have some damage. Yeah, that's one thing you got to take care of, though. I mean, you talk pretty about physical, it's a pretty physical racetrack, though, especially with these double file restarts getting down into turns one and two. Well, Andy, just listen to what Ron Fellows told us. He said, man, I tore my air dam up, couldn't stop the thing. It wasn't right. So, you know, you got to have downforce on those road, these road race cars, even though you're not running real fast. Downforce is downforce. No matter how fast you run, you got to have it. And if you beat up your front fenders like some of these guys have been doing, it will hurt you. On board once again with Max Pappas. As he has got the Jacques Villeneuve in his sights. I'll tell you, a good impressive run out of Jacques Villeneuve, too. I mean, got himself up there in the third position. Got a good clean car, nothing tore up on her, doing a good job. And look at Marcus. That gives you an idea. That's the gap now, and that's uh, well over two seconds. 
Let's get an update on the 32 car from uh, Dave Burns. Well, I know we might ask Jacques how he enjoyed South Carolina because that is where he spent time with this race team to get to know them and them to get to know him, his communication and how he likes the race car. That was Kershaw, South Carolina with crew chief Trent Owens. And as Max Pappas gives him just a little bit of a nudge right there, he likes a soft race car and that's what they went with to start this race. So far, not too bad for Jacques, just a little loose. The guy I'm watching is Patrick Carpentier right behind those two. As uh, Carpentier has uh, gotten around for another spot, uh, he, he moved to Perez back, and Boris said has gotten around here. He takes a look inside. Yeah, he's, he's got him. He's got Max right there. It looks like Villeneuve was holding Max Pappas up just a little bit, and it's cost a one-car spot here. Hey, Andy, what's going on now? These guys, Carpentier, Pappas, and Sed started tailback, and now they're all up to fifth, sixth, and seventh. Maybe that was the place you needed to start, huh? Well, you got to hand it to Max Pappas. He passed a lot of cars. He was in ninth spot even before a lot of cars just made those pit stops under caution and gave him a few extra spots. <laughs> But you see Carpentier, he's, he's giving a boot to Villeneuve here. Yeah. I wonder which one the crowd's pulling for. I noticed that little nudge, and that was it. Hey, buddy, I'm back here. <laughs> hey, pal, I'm uh -oh. the best Canadian, right? I see a lot of sparks flying over those curbs now. you got to be careful with those, with those curbs and not to tear anything up under the car. Well, there's a little rivalry between these two guys because they are both heavy favorites here with the Quebec fans. But, uh, you know, they'd like nothing better than to be the guy to be the one in victory lane with the other in second place. Yeah, and Max Pappas has got to be careful with him, too, because you don't want to be the one that's going to take one of these favorites out of the race. Five countries right now represented in the top seven positions. How's that for an international flavor? Who says NASCAR's regional sport? Yeah, they love a NASCAR up here. I mean, these fans are still going crazy. We get a little sprinkle of rain out there right now, but track still staying dry. Heading down into turn number 10, one more time. The 99 can't get it done. Let's get an update from Shannon. Well, you heard Dave mention Kershaw in South Carolina. This is a track that Patrick Carpentier also went to with the 99 team. They were so happy with their test out there. Oh, guys, he is in the wall. Looks like there's a problem with the 99 car. We're going to check on that. We'll get back to the story. Yeah, something while you were talking, he just nosed over towards the wall and has pulled it off. He's uh, off get to ready. I think it broke through right side tire. Get ready. No, that's, that's something abrupt there. I don't know what happened. Looks like Carpentier has, has his winning it down. See some debris, though. Well, if he blew the tire, that could be part of the uh, vent tubing to, to cool yeah, the brakes. Think he but try to get the car back to the pit road. I don't yeah. understand what he's doing there. He's got the winning net down. You can see it hanging on the door. 3700, 3700, Okay, now one key thing. We're at lap 16 right now. We feel he figured around 16, 17, 18. Those three laps right there are key. Blew right front tire. Keep going, Patrick, if you can. Keep going. If they can put fuel in now, that should get them to their next window, make this one more stop and take this baby home. Well, he was fourth when this all happened. And it doesn't look like, this looks more serious than, than yeah, some, something else happened to this car because he would try to, if it's just a flat tire, he would drive it back to the pit stall. Well, we got our third caution here as uh, the most we've ever had in the three years now that we've been coming here with the series was five. But take a look, see if we can see what happens. He's third in the screen, fourth overall. You see, just the car just nosed over hard. And I, I'm not seeing any tire rubber or anything. He must any. have had a problem either with the... Uh, it, it actually looked like his wheel hopping a little bit at one point. Let's take a look at this, see if he missed a gear or something, cause it to wheel hop, guys. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, he could have actually... Uh, when they shift, sometimes they'll go into a lower gear. Uh, if you go from, say, second to third, if you happen to miss that, and you could actually suck it up in the first gear, that could have happened right there, and, and that would have tear the transmission. And it'll tear, tear everything up when you downshift instead of upshifting. Yeah, because it looked like he just locked the rear tires yeah. up, whatever he did. So, yeah, yeah he could have went. Okay, so think about it. He could have went from third gear back down to second gear area and locked that baby right back up accidentally. It's hard to do, though, an H-pattern shifter like this. So It's easier than you think. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have, I, I have to. I have to. I'll admit to okay, it. Okay, go ahead and admit it. <laughs> It's not as hard as you think. I mean, they, the transmission shift, they've made them where they shift so much better. They go in gear so easily that now they'll actually even go in a gear you don't want them to go into easily. Mm. Pit road will be open. We'll see if there are any takers. Uh, remember, the first 17 stayed out. They have yet to take any fuel. Here comes Marcus Ambrose. Marcus, he's yeah, down. he's definitely coming Let's this take time. This opportunity okay, now. Everyone. We'll see what these other cars do. Oh, there's Villeneuve. Yep. He's going to stay out. Oh, and this will make the Canadian crowd happy. Now we're going to see what the 10 lapper is going to do. The guys have put oh. on lap 10. Look at the lower left of your screen. All the uh, fans the of Carpentier Patrick Carpentier, fan. they are heading for the exits. 
<laughs> and I hate to tell you, but the, that section's yeah, going to be cheering. a little, they're going to be a little empty there. Let's check in with Shannon. There's going to be no changes on this one car for Max Pappas. Four tires only and Sunoco fuel. The car is good, guys. They still do not have radio communication, but they're not going to worry about it right now. Jamie? Brad Coleman worked his way up to second. He was the lone American in the top five for a while. He said he's a little tight on left-handers. Four tires, fuel, track bar, and air pressure. Dave? Marcus Ambrose, who has led the majority of this race, pits now for four tires and fuel. They will pop a half a spring rubber into each rear spring to tighten, to make the rear of that car just a little bit stiffer, trying to get every drop of Sunoco fuel in, and he leaves pit road. And unfortunately, we have to tell you, the rain is starting to fall a little bit heavier. We're seeing people getting some umbrellas up, and you can see on some of our camera lenses right there some raindrops as uh, several cars did stay out, including Quebec native Jacques Villeneuve, and he takes over the race lead, our third different leader. We're under our third caution here as we have worked 17 of 74 laps as the umbrellas go up at Montreal. Thank you, Justin, for giving us the play-by-play the -play as the pit stop for Boris said was completed. Uh, now, the good news for Jeffrey Earnhardt, if we can tell you that he is going to be the recipient of the Aaron's Lucky Dog. The bad news is he's going to need 10 more cautions to get back on the lead lap uh, because he had that transmission problem earlier. And there he is. He is coming in to uh, get some service. So, uh, uh, Jeffrey, the only car uh, that is uh, down at least one lap. Everybody else is off. And we should point out Tony Ave is now behind the wall. He just came behind at, at the last caution. And Carpentier uh, brings our total to uh, six cars now, either off or out. So, Marty, last year we had 14 caution laps during this last race. We've already had eight. We're only 18 laps into it. I bet Jeffrey Earnhardt might get back on the lead lap. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll think positive thoughts for him uh, as uh, we are getting ready to go back to green flag racing. The lights are out. It's a long pace lap, so we'll uh, go for one more break. Stay with us. Well, Jacques Villeneuve is no stranger to victory. That was Indianapolis when he won the 500. He also won the car championship that same year in 1995 and then went on to Formula One to win the World Championship in 1997 to become a national hero for Canada and especially for the province of Quebec. And look at those two. We had a shot at them before we went to break and there they are still celebrating 1997. And he is on point in that number 32, Braun Racing, Dollar General Camry. And right alongside will be Jason Leffler. Now those two have yet to pit as we're getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. Andy, would you care to speculate on how much farther they want to go? Well, I don't know. They must not feel like they're inside their window to come down pit road. They're going to give up a lot of track position when they do. To uh, they see now, there's three different strategies in play: cars that haven't pitted, some that pitted at lap 10, and some that pitted on lap uh, 16. Now the lights are still on on the pace truck, so that means we're going to go at least one more time. Another guy that has not pitted is back in sixth place. That 27 car of uh, Jason Keller. There goes uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt, the uh, Aaron's lucky dog. So. He is going to hustle around to get back to uh, the back of the field and pick up his one lap. We pointed out he needs uh, quite a few more. Nine more. Nine more to go. I'll tell you what, guys. You start thinking about fuel strategy and stuff like that during this race, it'll make you pull your hair out because the more caution laps they got, the better fuel mileage they can get, the longer they can go. And it takes a lot of these calculations these guys have been planning on and makes a recalculate every single lap. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, fuel and the fuel calculations. There they are on the wall. They said well, that they, uh, they, they had a window that they wanted to be in, and they felt like probably it was going to be under green. Now they're still under caution. So they uh, looks like the 32 has switched sides. I think he is thinking about pitting, Dave. 
Is that right? Uh, adjusting, Andy. They are, I'm not talking about the sides on the racetrack. They're adjusting their pit strategy. They wanted to pit. They talked about pitting. There was a little bit of a miscommunication. That left Jacques Villeneuve on the track for, to, the, uh, to the cheers of the fans, but it really wasn't their strategy. They're going to have to pit here either when they go back to green or very, very soon thereafter. If he made a pit stop right now, it might be the best move. He would probably lose uh, the least amount of track position. If he's inside of his window, he could come down pit road uh, right before the green flag and lose probably a little less time than he would under a green flag situation. Well, he did switch over to uh, driver's left. Everybody else has been on the right side for the restarts, and he has the choice. So uh, we will find out if he is going to take advantage of it uh, when we get ready to go back. Well, the guys are looking good right now. The folks that come down pit road and on lap 7, 16, 17 in that area, because I'm pretty sure, Andy, they can get to their next window no problem. They now, are pretty sure or sure that they'll only make one more stop. Yeah. The only question mark will be the ones that pitted on lap 10 or whether they can make it on one more stop. And if these cautions keep going like they are, those guys are going to look like heroes because now they're in the front. They got that track position. The guys that pitted on lap 10. Got a quick moment. Let's talk a little football because it's preseason time. Monday night football is coming back with Brett Favre and the Minnesota Vikings. It still does not sound right, but that's okay. It's the Houston Texans in Minnesota. Preseason football. It starts at 7 Eastern with Monday night countdown and then the game at 8 all on ESPN. Come on, Marty. What are you talking about? You got a problem with guys who retire and come back? Uh, <laughs> well, let's Can see. He still Ken do it? Kenny Bernstein did it in drag racing, so why not? What's going to happen here? Oh, everybody in the pits will be ready. So now with the second round of cautions, we kind of got screwed. We're going to dive into pit road, come into green, make our pit stop so we don't lose too much time because we're now we're at our fuel window. All right. Key words there. We're in our fuel window. Yeah, they're at a disadvantage that their window is, uh, that their mileage is so poor that they're just now getting in it because they're going to have to line up behind a lot of cars. But this is the right time to come in. Uh, right on the screen flag, they'll lose the least amount of time get in and out, get that tank filled up, and then they can make it on one more stop. Yeah, I believe they're in their fuel window, though, around lap 17, because a lot of these guys, when they do the calculations, they're not thinking about how many cautions you're going to get. And to me, you got to gamble a little bit. If you don't gamble, you're going to lose. Well, the big beneficiary is going to be Paul Menard. He's going to get a big surprise here in a few moments in that number 98. He started 10th in this field, and he's going to be looking at a clean wide open track ahead of him and he is one of the cars that did pit on it's actually lap 11 that he made his pit stop so he is one of those that is gambling rusty that he can make it on the rest the rest of the way on one more stop so yeah uh, he's got the lead and uh and rolling the dice a little bit here I'll tell you one thing i'm looking at right now is paul menard behind jock bellanuve he's gonna have to slow down from 170 something to get on the brakes and not bust that speed limit and he needs to let Menard know behind him he's going to hit well, pit road. Well, I think road. No, Villeneuve's going to make this pit stop right now. He'll yeah. do it before they get the green. He'll come down okay. pit road right now. Okay, stand so correct me here, sorry. Glad you said that because I'm thinking that's <laughs> going to be tough. When he locks those brakes up front front of everybody and tries to hit down pit road, that's going to be a trick. Oh, and look at this. Leffler's coming as well. So the second row becomes the front row. 32 is on pit lane, 38 is in back. So it's now Menard and Carl Edwards, and they're going to be coming to the green flag, and they're both going, holy smokes, this is nice. We're up front. Everybody's just got to stay on course right now and save the brakes. They got their gas. They're all in their windows now. Team cars are in right now as we go back to green flag racing. On the right side, you can see going down into turn one, Carl Edwards has got the jump. Have yeah, a look at Andrew Ranger now. He has the preferred line off turn two. He gets a second spot from Paul Menard. Now, Ranger ran earlier today in the Canadian Tire Series, so he has a lot of laps on this track. He's uh, done well here in the past. Now on the right side, you can see the pit stop for Jacques Villeneuve. Ranger right now running second. He won, ran second behind J.R. Fitzpatrick in that Canadian Tire race just earlier today. Carl Edwards with that swollen jaw on the left side and a very sore left shoulder. Doing very well right now out in front of this race with Ranger second, Menard third, Jason Keller up to fourth, and Michael McDowell in fifth. And that is a car that is not a road course chassis. That is an oval chassis. Here comes a turn eight right now. This is a great passing zone. Andrew Ranger just not close enough to Carl Edwards to get it done. But look at the Holly end car, the Steven Light. He took a shot at it, just didn't get close enough either. Ranger won here back in the Canadian Tire Boy, Series back Ranger. in 2008. And look at this. He's trying to take the lead here. Okay, makes a wide entry. Now, look at yep, this. He's going to duck this under. a good move right here. Carl Edwards just overdrove the corner, and Ranger was ready for it. 
Look at that. Also, a little further back, about five cars trying to make it through that turn 10. Looks like everybody survived. Now heading out of back straight away here into big turn drag race 13. Going on. Yeah, big who's, drag race. Who's going to be the bravest one to dive down in here on the brakes? Watch the nose of the car. It's Carl hitting the brakes first. Ranger's going to take the inside line. He's got the preferred line. He'll make it stick. Oh, he jumps over the curb, gets the lead. Whoo, man. Oh, almost hit the wall. Coming down the front straightaway to complete another lap. It'll be at the end of lap 21 of 74. So we're almost a third of the way through this race. It's 11 cars. The car that Denny Hamlin's driving on the oval tracks currently. You saw Scott Legacy in this car earlier in the year. Scott did a great job driving it. They've been switching a lot of drivers around trying to get the right performance out of this car and evaluate it a little uh -oh, bit. There's Kyle Busch now with another huh? problem. That's uh, back in, uh, look like the, what, the turn one, two area again is, uh, they, <laughs> look at the smiley face they put <laughs> on the patch. Uh, it's good the guys in the pit crew have a good sense of humor. I don't think Carl has a good sense of humor right now after that problem. No, well, this, go this ahead. It's just about the right time, Marty, right now. About four laps into this thing since it's restart. where well, these guys start sizing these other cats up at where they're going to make these passes at. Is it going to be down the long straight? Is it going to be in turn eight? That's Ambrose going to be? Jumping up into the top five just by Stephen Light. Yep, move Marcus to fifth. Stephen back to sixth. Brad Keselowski is shown in seventh right now. He got around Jason Keller. Oh, look at the battle up at front for the lead. And boy, does Andrew Ranger know how to protect that inside line there. Well, it actually looks like Carl Edwards, had, when he got passed over there, went to the inside of the track to guard that pass that Andrew was getting ready to put on him. And he really had a square off the corner, Andy. Got him sliding out, and that's where Ranger got him. Ranger set him up perfectly. Right here, you see Carl Edwards now trying to make this move. Uh, thinks better of it on this long straightaway down into this corner. High breaking area. You jump over these curbs. Man, they're getting some, get some air over those curbs. While all this is going on, let me tell you, Andy Lally, who finished second yesterday, along with Brendan Gaughan in the GT category in the Grand Am race, he has gone behind the wall. And he was uh, running in the top 25. Right now, though, that's the main battle on the track. Yeah, but look at Marcus Ambrose makes the pass on Michael McDowell. He has made up a lot of ground. That 47 car is flying. There you see. Marcus, and he is trying to pull away from McDowell. I, I just give McDowell credit for being able to get that car around the track. I mean, it, it is not set up for a road course at all. He had to qualify on time, did it in the rain, was the last one to make it in on time, in fact. And here he is uh, running the top five. Let's get an update on Andrew Ranger. Jamie? Well, Marty, he's making just his sixth ever start in the Nationwide Series. He's learning as he goes. First time driving for CJM Racing. He talked to Paul Wolf and under. We've got, a, we've got a crash on the track, guys. Yes, we do. And involved oh, Brad Keselowski. And sure. also Alex Tegliani in the 81. And Dumoulin gets a little bit of oh, damage from that, too, in the 23. So tough break for another one of the native Quebecers, Alex Tagliani. Okay, Don't this is exactly what the guys have put on lap 10 need. They just need more cautions. Because I'll tell you what, Andy, they get enough caution. They can get their self in there. And pitting on lap 10 could be the time that made these guys heroes. Well, those two were duking it out for seventh position. In fact, uh, Brad had the spot. Tagliani was trying to take it away. And let's see exactly what happens. Is, oh, this is the tail end of it. Boy, there must, somebody Looks must like have dropped some fluid. incidents there at the same time. You see Brad Coleman making his way through there. Well, there's Coleman, the help. Coleman gets a piece of Tagliani, puts him around. But you can see Col or, uh, Keselowski's already around in front of him. Is that called a sympathy spin? <laughs> <laughs> On board with the Stephen Light. That's a good shot now. Keselowski oh, yeah. just going around. Well, a synchronized spinning. <laughs> Keselowski spins out. The guys behind him spin out, too. So I don't know if it's a chain reaction or what happened there. Here's Max Pabs' view. He's going easy. Oh, watch out. He just passed four. That was pretty easy. Well, he's passed a bunch today. Max Pappas has. He's back up to 13th spot now. All right. Well, and you know who else this helps? Jacques Villeneuve. Remember, he and Jason Leffler came in just as we went back to green flag racing. That allows him to tighten back up into the back of the field. He's shown in 35th. Leffler is 34th. But now they're no, they were half a track behind. Now they're right in the pack. Lights are still on in the pace truck, so it'll give us a chance to take a break here under our fourth caution. 
at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. At least one lap down, so he gets the benefit, but uh, still going to need some more help to get back on the lead lap, but he is getting some camera time at least, he even though it was a tough break. Had four cautions so far with 10 laps of cautions total. I mean, uh, it's like we're only at lap 23. We've got a ways to go. Let's get an update on the 11 of uh, Andrew Ranger, Dave Burns. Well, Marty, just how about how much fun Andrew Ranger has on the road course? As we mentioned, he ran here earlier today, mixed it up with some guys. How about two years ago here, mixing it up with Kerry Mix as they came to the checkers, Mix down to the inside, Ranger on the outside. Oh, can't outbreak it. Mix over the curb as they come down to the checkers. He'll try to make a run back but Ranger will fall short that day. Then, just a few weeks later in Trois-Rivières, there he is falling short. In Trois-Rivières, they came to the, towards the finish. Here goes Ranger trying to make it, and he's gonna go for the win. Oh, he gets the crash instead. He loses both times, but you know what? He won the championship that season, and the next year, he won both those races, Marty. Well, he leads the Canadian Tire Series right now by 134 points over DJ Kennington. And you want to see how that race ended earlier today? Take a look at this because here is uh, J.R. Fitzpatrick leading. Second place is Kennington. Guess who's third? <laughs> yeah, Andrew Ranger turns him. And that's the way it would end. Is uh, yeah, yeah, one second. Oh, yeah, right that's right. It, we did right have a it. little problem here. Oh, oh, and Scott man. Steckley going upside down in the 22 with Don Thompson uh, Jr. in the four car. Nobody was hurt in that, but uh, Andrew was accredited with the second place behind J.R. Fitzpatrick. Kennington was given fourth place, and it's a 134-point difference. And he has won uh, about five of the ten races held this season. And right now, he's the race leader here at Montreal. NASCAR Racing on TSN is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, the world's number one domain registrar. Get your .ca domain name today at GoDaddy.com. Hey, race fans, looking for a chance to see NASCAR up close? TSN invites you to enter the ultimate Dodge NASCAR Experience Contest. You and a guest have the chance to win a trip or two to Phoenix International Speedway. Experience NASCAR in style. Enjoy two sweet tickets for NASCAR Sprint Cup and Nationwide Series races November 14th and 15th. That's not all. Go behind the scenes with your pre-race pit and garage passes before the green flag. For a chance to win, enter Dodge.ca slash racing. Brought to you by Dodge, the official vehicle of the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Wendy's Kick for a Million is back. Go to Wendy's, upsize your combo, and get a game card for a chance to win instant prizes. A 2009 Nissan Rogue. JVC Home Electronics. Esquire Watches. And Wendy's gift cards and food prizes. Plus, get bonus entries for a chance to be one of four to go head-to-head -to, -head to kick for $1 million. Enjoy a Wendy's combo and get a Kick for a Million game card today. For Bobby, Crusader of Darmius. Defender of Druids. For Phil and Kelly, whose work remains unknown to Hollywood, but always wins best picture among friends and family alike. And for Steve, whose parents don't share his particular love of music, but 6,000 other people certainly seem to. For those who want to do more, there's Rogers High Speed Internet. Visit us online and see why only Rogers has been proven the fastest and most reliable, period. Tomorrow, we are off to a gig at the Tropica Loca Resort. No, we'd rather hit the Siesta Loca Resort. <sighs> Why? Because Steve from Moncton says the chambermaid will make a swan out of my towel. And Jane from Red Deer says the buffet has chicken fingers. Crispy ones. Read the customer reviews at Expedia.ca. The fans know, man. The fans know. Smarter travelers read customer reviews at Expedia.ca. No wonder it's the best place to book a trip. Expedia.ca. Your trip, your way. Tomorrow, the top tennis stars in the world meet in Flushing Meadows for the U.S. Open. Defending champion Roger Federer looks for his sixth straight title, while the women will need to topple reigning champ Serena Williams. The U.S. Open. Coverage begins tomorrow on TSN. Back here in Montreal, the sun is leading the Napa Auto Parts 200 here at Montreal. Second about Andrew Ranger like we were just before the break. Uh, Canadian guy, I don't know. Ranger or something. Ranger. Ranger, Ranger. Uh, you should know, Francois. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>
And Paul Wolf is the crew chief for Andrew Ranger. First time you were watching that old video footage and laughing yourself. First time for your driver ever doing double file restarts. What are you telling him as he leaves the, the field of the green? Well, he's done such a good job so far today. We just tell him, just keep doing what you've been doing. He's uh, he's a little nervous right now. This is a big day for him. But um, we told him, just just keep doing what you've been doing. It'll come to you. Uh, I think we got a great race car. We just need to log laps. It's still early, so um, we got to be there at the end. He's been very confident all weekend. He finished third in the race earlier today. Guys, we'll see how he does leading the field to the green for the first time. And the lights are out on the pace car as it'll pull off right there at turn 14. Andrew on the right side there in the 11 alongside Carl Edwards. How would you feel if you were basically the rookie against Carl? Well, that's the thing. He's got to put out of his mind. He can't let that affect his judgment. He's he's a good road racer. He knows this racetrack. Uh, don't worry about who you're racing against. It's just another car, but it's kind of hard not to. His sixth nationwide series start, first time ever on a restart as he takes the green, heading towards one. Here we go. So far, so good. And that's textbook right there. He's racing Carl Evers clean and aggressive through there, gets the lead out of turn two. Going down that long straightaway. Notice a little bit further back there, the five car. There is Ron Fellows. Remember, he last pitted on lap 17. He's well within his window. So maybe things are turning towards his stretch. You're thinking the guys that pitted on lap 11, which includes the top six, might be on that cusp. They're right on the edge of being able to do this on one more stop. Now, we know for sure the five car can do it, and all the, all the cars that pitted after him can make it on one more stop. Uh, and likely, with all the caution laps we've had, even the guys that pitted on lap 11 can make it on one more stop. The Rangers got a mirror full of the 60 of Carl Edwards. There is third place right behind him, Paul Menard, Marcus Ambrose, Coleman Pappas in the one car is sixth. Oh, oh look right out. here. Kyle Busch gets turned, Jason, or Justin Allgaier, and the five is involved, but I don't know how much damage. Now, I think I think the fellows is going to have some damage there. We can't, couldn't see it from that angle, but uh, you see all the damage on the 12 car. That came from contact with Ron Fellows. Boy, Allgaier coming off a, a dismal week last week at Bristol, and now he's got you more damage. Get ready, get ready here. Da big damage. See some more, more cars road, beating Ron. and banging. Yeah, Bring it going road. into 10. Can't make it. See what, guys, there is a lot of yeah. beating and banging. You, you can't hear fellows. fellows has a lot of damage. Yeah. Fellows. Is and oh, all guys cars destroyed. Yeah, the caution is out. And uh, this is going to tie our uh, record for cautions here in five. Boy, what a tough break oh, for my. Justin Allgaier. It's been up bad. It was like it's been in the middle. Justin, remember, started at the back of the field because he had to uh, change a transmission. He was running 15th, had a good drive going because he's not a road course specialist. Here we go. Oh, he's oh, kamikaze and he yeah. couldn't stop. I wonder if his locked brakes were out. Locked it up and uh, just tried to maybe get a little too aggressive and didn't have a full pedal. Well, you saw the 12 car, just like you said, coming at it dead sideways. And yeah, Ron you, Fellows is going to get blindsided right oh, there. Oh, yeah. See? Look at this. And so did Kyle. He got the right rear quarter panel damage. And I'm just wondering if he's got any brakes. Let's listen. Wheel hopping. Oh, yeah, you hear the wheels hopping right there. Just totally out of control. That's a two for one right there. He gets the 18 and the five. Take a look from Stephen Wallace's perspective as he barely survives this. Look oh, at this. Oh, man, he got to get And now where does he go? To the right. Makes the right move. Boy, good job right there. You need to give him a raise, Rusty. Well, he's got one. How's that? I'll, do it after <laughs> this. I'll buy him a Coca-Cola on the trip home. Won't charge him. Be on me. Tough break for Ron Fellows. We had just tires and fuel. Fix the damage as you're changing the tires. Boy, I Ron, think they need more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like it. the frame's bent. Yeah, they've got some damage. I think they've got damage the trailing arm on the right side, some of the rear suspension. Well, they got a lot of things they need to no, fix. Here. Really bad. That's one of these deals. When you interview Ryan Fellows after this, he's going to say they'll probably say what happened. He'll say I have no he idea. Said, you tell me. You tell me. I just got blindsided, buddy. You'll turn left, right. And Gosh, look, look at, at what's car. left of the 12. It's amazing they were even able to drive these cars back. You know, we talked about wheel hop, Andy. That was a classic case of wheel hop getting in there real deep, and you heard those rear wheels jumping up and down. We've seen that problem at Watkins Glen, a lot of tracks. This is a problem that's been happening more and more of late. Well, these these cars are just real susceptible to that. I mean, it, the, they have truck arms. They were actually called that because they came out of pickup trucks originally. They're long suspension arms that hooks the rear hook the rear into the chassis, and they just it's real susceptible to that wheel hop when you get on the brakes hard and the rear tires kind of lock up a little bit, and then you just start bouncing. My question for you as we watch these two making their way back to the garage. 
this basically opens the window for everybody in the top half of the field to make it now on one stop. Well, everybody can make it on one more stop, I think, from what I've seen. Now, especially with these extra caution laps, I think that puts everybody on equal ground. Uh, the only thing is now you've got, you know, the running orders kind of jumbled because of the strategies. Well, and then the question becomes, we always talk about on a road course, it's always the guy who makes that. It's the next stop. Right, that yep. guy who, yep. who's first on the last round of pit stops. And that's what we're going to have to keep track of next because uh, it looks like uh, Ron Fellow's day is over as he will not repeat as winner here in Montreal. Despite the fact he has four nationwide wins, all on the road courses, two in the Camping World Truck Series, his day is done here. But it's not over for everybody else. Stay with us. Well, let's take a look at our Verizon Wireless Race Rundown. It was a soggy qualifying effort for Marcus Ambrose, but he was 1.2 seconds better than runner-up Carl Edwards. When it came time for the race, the Canadian fans, well, they follow Patrick Carpentier as well as Jacques Villeneuve, but Carpentier, it appeared that he missed a shift going from possibly uh, down from second up to third and caught first because uh, he pulled it over. Saw a lot of skid marks. They're back in the garage working on it, trying to get him back out. A lot of early cautions. We've had five. This is Brad Keselowski with no help doing a little loop. Right behind him, there was a lot of help for Alex Tagliani as he got punted. And uh, then the big one that brought out our fifth one. Watch Justin Allgaier as he's coming down in that Verizon car and bam, right into the five of Ron Fellows and also collects Kyle Busch in the quarter panel. And oh, was that wicked. And there is uh, the damage back in the garage area. And uh, Jamie has caught up with Justin Algar. So let's find out what happened, Jamie. And a lot of damage all over this carpet. They continue to work on it. Justin, what'd you see? <laughs> well, I caused it and, and I feel bad for Ron and Kyle because they didn't deserve to be in it, but got down in and, and got on the brakes and, and unfortunately just started wheel hopping real bad and tried saving it. And, and once I realized there was no chance of saving it, I tried getting away from everybody, spinning it out to the right to try to not hit anybody. And, and unfortunately, once we got in the grass, we just picked up speed and, and uh, unfortunately got right on those guys. So I hate it for those guys. That they definitely shouldn't have been involved. And, and uh, I hate it for the Verizon Wireless guys because they, they uh, didn't deserve this day this two weeks in a row now that we've had bad luck. And, and uh, this one's my fault. And unfortunately, uh, saying sorry doesn't take, the, you know, doesn't take away anything, but uh, just hate it for those guys. They didn't deserve to be in the wreck. Well, Justin, you're leading Rookie of the Year. What is it like as a rookie coming here for the first time and you have all these road course veterans around you? This is a tough place. For sure, and, and uh, you know we spent the last couple of days in the rain, and so to come here in the dry was definitely a different racetrack, and probably just trying too hard. You know we, we weren't really uh, trying to race anybody; we were just trying to keep you know maintain position and keep good track position and uh, play fuel strategy. And, and unfortunately, uh, we didn't do that today. Well, they're not giving up. They're working on this car, going to try to get back out there, Dave. Yeah, and I don't think that's the case for the five car, Jamie. It looks like uh, they've shut it down for the day. Ron, uh, how deep is the disappointment uh, after having such a good car? Well. Man, I, I just love working with these guys. Uh, Dale Jr., Mr. Hendrick, thank you very much. Um, we're not even halfway. <laughs> it's crazy. This thing is wrecked. Just, um, you know, the couple of road races for me are my Daytona 500s. But we will be back. Rusty, you know what it's like not to do well at Daytona. Oh, yeah, I sure do. I mean, it's, that's unbelievable. I can, you can just hear his voice, how disappointed he is. I've been that disappointed many, many times. Just like he said, these road courses are his Daytona 500, one of the biggest races of the year. He really thought that he could run well, qualified great, and Andy's stuck here with a pile of rubble. Yeah, they got a car they can't fix, and it's just a big disappointment, and you hate seeing that. And he did a good job of handling it. But he, it wasn't anything that Justin uh, you know, did intentionally, but he did make a mistake and, and took two cars out. Well, guys, uh, we have uh, finally uh, caught up with Patrick Carpentier. And uh, Shannon, uh, what's uh, the word? What really happened out there? Well, you can see Jerry Baxter and Patrick Carpentier speaking right now. I did speak with Jerry Baxter. He said that it was a blown engine. Can you tell me what happened, what led up to that? Yeah, I haven't that made that mistake too many times in my life, but uh, missed the shift, you know, on the downshift there. I was uh, going through the field, and the car was uh, really fast. I mean, we had an amazing car, and I was going to go and battle with uh, Marcus Ambrose and up to Ford. And on a downshift, whoa, went a little bit too high and damaged the engine, and uh, it blew up down the straightaway. So it's a mistake. It's, uh, it's more frustrating when you make your own uh, mistakes, but part of, part of racing, I guess. I know that this has been a frustrating weekend for you, qualifying in the back of the field and now obviously this. When's the next time we're going to see you in a car? 
Uh, hopefully I do uh, get to do, I'm going to do some more races for uh, Tommy Baldwin so uh, in the Spring Cup Series. So uh, hopefully we get to uh, keep going. I wanted to show well today, but a uh, little mistake there. All right. Well, the fans are definitely disappointed, and Patrick Carpentier is definitely disappointed here today, guys. But there is a Canadian at the head of the field. Andrew Ranger is ahead of Carl Edwards and Marcus Ambrose as we are getting ready to go back to green flag racing. The lights are out on the pace truck. Montreal getting ready for a restart. Let's listen in on Marcus Ambrose. Hey Al, if you can find Carl Spotter, I'll be on the inside behind Ranger there. If he wants me to, I can make room for him. Leave that 11 for him, because he's not being very nice. He's here. Can you get with Jason up there? His name is Jason. 10-4. Drew, make sure we can get there. Tell that guy he's got to finish first to make a hero out of himself. So they're a little worried. Uh, I guess they saw Andrew earlier today in that uh, Canadian Tire Series, and he gets a good start and goes into the corner. Now does everybody give everybody room? So far, so good. And listen to the Canadian fans. They cheer as he goes through turns one and two and takes the lead a little bit farther down that stretch. But here comes Ambrose. Looking for second place on Carl. And I think he's got him, yes. Yeah, Carl was real smart through that corner right there. There's nothing he could have done to block him off on that one. When you got a guy coming at you that, that hard, under braking, through these very tight S's, man, you got to be respectful in that part of the track. Well, he also knows that Ambrose is going to the front. I mean, there's no reason to try to chop him off at that point of the racetrack. Boy, Brad Coleman is doing all he can to hold off the 98 of Paul Menard. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it down this long straightaway run. It's going to happen under braking. And there is uh, Pax Pappas right alongside. Is he going to try and follow through? No but it was Menard safely getting around Coleman. And that was another key pass, to, uh, place to pass. Like we said, that was the entry of turn eight right there. Now they're coming down into the hairpin. This is another great place to do the passing. Now you see Menard blocking. Whoa. Taking a look. And Max has Locks to get on the binders hard. He's still got up the side now with Brad Coleman. Andy, these guys are just tearing fenders up big time. I mean, every corner, they're beating them in. We're working lap number 30 of 74. We're not even halfway, as Ron Fellows pointed out. I mean, this race has taken a long time, and it's taken a heavy toll. You remember what Ron Fellows said? This is my Daytona 500. These other guys are thinking the same way. I want to run good here. But, man, they got to bring these things home because they're tearing these dudes up right now. On board with Carl Edwards. Running in third place right now, ahead of Menard. And you can see that the top three are sort of trying to check out. Ranger gets a standing ovation coming through there. A little bit on further the back. Break. There's Coleman. He's going kamikaze on the outside. Underneath, light lights up the tires. Stephen Wallace right behind in the 66. Looks like he's going to get the spot. Yeah, lights way wide. And he's going to lose not only one, he's going to lose two. Further back there is Jacques Villeneuve. Remember when he had to pit? They messed up the pit stop. Well, all these cautions have helped Jacques as he is now running 12th. Look out as we've got a battle for the lead now. You know, there's no love right here between Ranger and Ambrose. Ambrose is not happy with how Ranger's been so aggressive early. And Ambrose had to use every inch of that outside part of the corner to make the pass stick. Yeah, that was a pretty risky move for Ambrose. And here comes Carl underneath. So he's going to dive underneath and makes the pass, and so Ranger goes just, back to third. He did just exactly what he said he was going to do. He's going to make Carl some room, and he did that, and uh, Carl followed him through. You know, getting back to Ranger, one thing I want to say there, I do not see any damage on this guy's car at all, so he can't be getting too aggressive. Well, oh, there's some damage. Yeah, that's some trouble for the 23 of Jean-Francois de Moulin. He is another one of the Canadian contingent uh, on a one-off here, and, boy, he's got that thing uh, pretty well tagged but he's able to keep it running. He was 24th at the time before that contact. Whoa, we're lighting him up a little bit further back. That's Brad Keselowski. He's got his hands full with Justin Marks, Dumoulin, and the 23 as well. Up front, it is still the 47 of Marcus Ambrose. And the top three have opened up some space over Menard and fourth. Well, Ambrose is sure aggressive over the curbing. See how high the car jumps up, up off the ground, but he makes it work. You know, Ambrose, you know, Andy, you got to admit, this guy has got to be one of the best road, best road, road racers has ever come along in NASCAR. I mean, he's on the pole in the rain. He's run good in the rain. He's got from the back to the front. It's amazing what he does on a road course. And think about this. You saw Kyle Busch there. He has moved into sixth position. And how many times have we seen him almost sideways or sideways or being hit? Well, right now he's had plenty of time to figure this course out. We mentioned this is the first time that Kyle's been here to Montreal, but he's got enough laps right now. We're 31 laps in this event. 
and he knows how to get around this place right now. So now he's just getting aggressive. Yeah, let's think about just how lucky he is, too, because he was a part of that incident with Ron Fellows, and he's still able to stay on the racetrack with minimal damage and still very competitive. You can see the front of this car is in pretty good shape. He's got some damage on the left front. A lot of damage on the right rear quarter panel of the 18 car, but it's not affecting the performance. Right behind him is Brad Coleman. We already talked about the fact he needs to finish well. This is his last run in that car. So uh, right now he is in the seventh position, trying to track down Kyle in sixth. There's your top three going through turn 10. Here's fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Whoa, and Menard gets wide. That's the door opening for Pappas in the one. You know, we mentioned earlier about the brakes, how tough it is right here. This is the point in the race where if you can get yourself a little breathing room and you don't have to use the brakes right now a lot, save these babies because you're going to need them at the end of this race. Heading for turn 13. Everybody staying in place. Max looked to the inside, but no, didn't have enough opportunity or enough room to get it. Remember, we talked about the brakes, and if you use them up, and we were all thinking that Max was pretty hard on him early in the races. He was picking off people left and right in that first few laps, and he still seems to have plenty of braking power underneath him, but maybe he realizes we have still got over half of this race to go. We're working lap 33 of 74. And they're finally starting to settle in just a little bit, and guys are getting kind of in a rhythm. You see here comes Stephen Wallace, and Boris said running right behind Stephen Wallace. And then Stephen Light right behind in 10th. J.R. Fitzpatrick, who was the winner earlier today in that uh, Canadian Tire race. And then Kenny Wallace is running 12th. So for all the Kenny fans, that uh, there's five, 5,000 of them. 5,000 happy people seeing Kenny Wallace. He was in the top 10 on this restart. He's slipped back a couple of spots now. He's back to 12th, but he's still having a great run. Well, Stephen's got his mirrors full of bars said. We told you if you were with us yesterday, Boris, they, they redid the seat in that car. Remember at Watkins Glen, he had his knees up around his ears and it was very uncomfortable. He, they gave him about three more inches and he said it's still not perfect, but at least now he's not cramping. Yeah, he struggled. I talked to him in the garage. He struggled big time at Watkins Glen with that. He said it was so uncomfortable to drive that car that way. And I, I like watching him follow Stephen right there because he taught Stephen four different times how to road race. Took him to oh, wheel hop. That was a lock up in the rear wheels there. Now, you think that was wheel hop or lock up? Probably lock that up on that just one. like he just flat locked up the rears without wheel hopping. And very seldom you'll see that. Some great racing here. This may be our longest green flag run of the day, guys, as, as the field has finally stretched out a little bit where it's allowed us to move back into the field to where some of the battles are happening. Uh oh, Keselowski. Brad Keselowski's around again. That's turn number 10. He's having a tough day today. Yeah, he was in 24th position and uh, he's going to go backwards. You know, in the last six races, he has scored more points than anybody else, and that includes Kyle Busch. There yeah, is Kyle. Of Kyle Bush. He is putting a lot of pressure oh, oh, on Max Pappas pressure, right here. Pressure. I think he's, he's trying to rearrange the bumper. <laughs> See the two team cars right there, the 18 car and the 20 car. This is both out of Joe Gibbs stable. Brad Coleman, this is his last time this year in this car for Joe Gibbs, so he wants to have a good run today. So you say he's driving it like it might be his last race? Yeah, he, <laughs> he wants to show off a little bit right now. At least I would be. What's that song they uh, play in drag racing? Drive it like you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of bad luck, Brad. Oh, there goes Max. Max. a little bit. He got a little spot. Yeah, that is going to cost him two. Kyle and Brad say thank you very much, and we'll take the positions. You know, Andy, a little while ago, we saw Boris said lock those rear wheels up and slide in there. You know, in order to save the front brakes, you probably want to get as much rear brake in those cars as you possibly can, don't you? Yeah, you do. You want to try to put that bias as far back as possible without having that lockup issue or a wheel hop issue. And uh, it's a fine line that they walk there because those front brakes are taxed so much. You want to try to take some pressure off. But boy, if you go too far to the rear, it cause you to crash the car like we saw Justin Allgaier do earlier. Well, we've got our first chance to really take you up to speed with Nationwide Insurance. There's our leader and Dave Burns, you're up. Marcus Ambrose told you the story that he wrecked his primary car at Watkins Glen doing the celebration. Well, according to crew chief Frank Kerr, we found a chassis laying around, put a front clip on it, added some sheet metal, and we're on the pole. Pretty cool, huh? And they continue to lead. The 60 car of Carl Edwards running in second place right now. Of course, he's trying to chase down the 18 for that championship. Uh, Carl's car condition loose in the right-handers. They, of course, will have to pit again. They are on with that group strategy-wise that pitted on lap 11. Jamie? Andrew Rainer, the 2007 Canadian Tire Champion, is learning how to save fuel. He did not know how to do that before this race. They'll continue talking him through it. He last pitted on lap 11. They must pit between 48 and 52, but he's holding his own in the top three. Dave? 
Menard also pitted on the lap 11 strategy. They did not change tires on the 98 car, but just took on fuel. And again, that, again, that damage, not a problem for him right now. And the other interesting thing about his car, he's got the rookie stripe like other guys who have not been at this racetrack before, including the 18, I think, Jamie. Yes, he does have rookie stripes. Kyle Busch, something you never see from him. He just continues to forge forward despite all that damage we've been talking about. He said it's handling just fine. Didn't sound like he was a fan of the track earlier, Marty, but I think he's changing his mind. And rounding out the top ten is Brad Coleman in six, Max Pappas in seventh, Barr said eighth, Stephen Light ninth, and J.R. Fitzpatrick in tenth. Where's Jacques Villeneuve, you say? Well, he is in 12th place, sandwiched between the two Wallaces, Stephen and Kenny, as we step aside here on lap 35 of 74. Yeah, we still got a long way to go in this one. Let's check out our motorsports action for next week. NASCAR Nationwide Series, degree V12, 300 Atlanta, Saturday at 6.30 Eastern. It'll be the backseat drivers again. The four guys will be in the booth. I'll be in Crandall, Wisconsin, off-road racing, guys. And NASCAR Sprint Cup Series will be in Atlanta, presented by Pennzoil. That's next Sunday night at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And the Max Tools, NHRA U.S. Nationals, presented by Lucas Oil, qualifying next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. and 5 Eastern on ESPN2. And then finals, Monday, September 6th, Labor Day, 1 Eastern on ESPN2. Stephen Wallace just took his uh, pit stop here working on lap number 37. So uh, he gets the service done. He has a bit of damage, but at this stage of this race, almost everybody does. Yeah, it was definitely unscheduled. It had a lot of left front damage on that car. It must have got in the corner a little too deep and slid up into somebody or something, but that tire was rubbing, a lot of smoke coming off it, so they had to pit this car to get that fender off the tire. We should tell you, Justin Allgaier has officially uh, been ruled out of this race, along with uh, Ron Fellows, who they knew that one as soon as they brought it in. Not out of this race is that man right there, Marcus Ambrose. And you want to talk about a guy who is doing very well in road course races. He has, in the last four road course events, finished no lower than third. And he's won the past two years at Watkins Glen. I mean, he is the man right now on road, all road courses, no matter which series, whether it's a nationwide series or the Sprint Cup series. He is the man to beat everywhere we go. Well, if you're turning right and left. This is the guy you got to beat. Yeah, and we asked him about what his secret is to doing so well on the road courses. I don't have the perfect lap ever on a road course. I just try to eliminate as many mistakes as I can. So I get the car very uh, neutral. You know, it's not doing anything crazy. I, I want it so I can jump curbs. I want it so I can break late, straight. I just want it very docile for me so then I can look after the rest and not make the mistakes. So I think that's what is my secret to road racing is that I don't look for the perfect lap. I just try to minimize my mistakes. I guess that's his way of saying he's not going to tell us what his secret is. <laughs> well, I, I noticed he said he wasn't talking about bumping and topping curbs, and but yeah, I think we saw him do that. Oh yeah, he's doing plenty of that. He's very, you know, he's very aggressive. I mean, he's not afraid to use the bumper if he needs to, but he has got some kind of secret really that makes him faster. I mean, he's just faster than these other guys when you start turning right and left. Well, and you saw that graphic. I mean, he has run a lap as quick as the track record in the race, so that gives you an idea of just how good that car is. And uh, right behind him is uh, Carl Edwards saying, how do I find 3.4 seconds? Because that's how much he's trailing by. And Andrew Ranger's another two seconds back. Well, the last lap, Carl Edwards actually beat Marcus Ambrose by just a little bit. Now they're coming across the line again. Uh, Marcus Ambrose runs another fast lap, though, and uh, Carl Edwards loses another three tenths. You know, Marcus and Carl Edwards have teamed up to run that Daytona prototype car yesterday. They had a lot of practice on the racetrack in the dry, and Carl says it really helped him, and obviously he had to help Marcus also. I don't know if he needed any help. I had to help Mike him. Wallace around. Yeah, Mike Your Wallace brother. gets it turned around. Now, uh, gets it back safely under control and back out onto the track. He was running in 21st at that time. Checking in right now on the 33. That is J.R. Fitzpatrick, our winner from earlier today in the Canadian Tire Series. And Boris said right behind. And that is for eight. Looks like Boris has been involved in a few little skirmishes too today. You see a lot of damage off on all four corners to the body, but his car is very competitive. He started in the rear also by having to change engines after qualifying blew an engine up uh, in the rain qualifying last night. Yeah, he actually qualified fourth and then it just let go and they made the change uh, this morning. It's 
check in uh, a little bit further forward on the field because uh, Paul Menard has got a very nice run going right now. He is there in sixth place trying to track down Brad Coleman for fifth. And uh, Dave Burns is caught up with his crew chief. Yep, he's doing a great job right now. Matt Pucha looking down the straightaway to pick up his driver. How is the car and is that damage affecting him at all, Matt? No, I don't believe so. Uh, he says the car's pretty good. Just takes a couple laps to get going here on uh, after a caution. But other than that, the balance is pretty good. So we're going to do a little bit of air pressure here, see if we can get to go a little bit better on the shorter run. But stop here by four or five laps here and see what we got that okay they'll be pitting soon guys maybe three or four laps how much of a gamble would that be and while a little you, gamble yeah we'll be while you were finishing up I, I just noticed Eric Darnell we haven't mentioned him very much he's uh, mired back in 30th he has just uh, made a pit stop so uh, we'll update all the Darnell fans there uh, but meanwhile Paul Menard continues to circle this track in sixth position and he's got a bit of a gap now of about four seconds over seventh place, Max Pabst. In fact, there you just got a quick glimpse of how far Max is behind in this battle. So I'm starting to wonder as Alex Tagliani comes into pit lane, another of the Quebec contingent, as he's already got some damage from an earlier spin, especially in that right rear corner panel. He was in the top 15 as he's heading towards uh, Jamie Little. He's actually had a heck of a rally back. You see the damage there, but remember earlier, Marty, he got a speeding penalty and he fought back to 12th now. So they're going to try to fix some of that damage for tires for Alex Tagliani, who's a regular open wheel veteran and making his first start ever in the NASCAR series. Good to see him here. He's got quite a few fans around here. So they continue. They're having a little bit of a problem on the, uh, the jack doesn't seem to be getting the, 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 the body up high enough for them to get the... Uh, wheels on but he finally gets it done in 24 seconds and that's a lot of time so here we have run 10 laps under green I, I hate to tell you this but that really is our longest green flag run of the day we've had five cautions we're working lap 40 of 74 so we are past halfway can we stay green and how is that going to affect that last round of pit stops well stay with us to find out there's your top five They are already on the left side. Now, remember, uh, Tagliani stopped 24 seconds. They were 10 seconds better. Okay, now you know what they want, a caution flag. If yes, they, they get do. one right here, it would put them in a really good spot. We talked about if you're the first guy to make that last stop, you sometimes, most of the time, have the benefit. Well, the benefit is if the caution comes out now, he's the only one that can take advantage yep. of it. Uh, if, if it goes here a few laps and the other cars get on pit road, uh, then it kind of evens itself out. But right now, Andrew Ranger is sitting in a good spot. Ooh, I just saw some more raindrops on that uh, camera lens. And that could bring out a caution. Well, let's hope not. We had a few sprinkles earlier. Right now, Marcus Ambrose is closing in on some lap traffic. We can tell you that there are now four cars at least one lap down, including Antonio Perez, Eric Darnell, Mark Green, and Jeffrey Earnhardt. Jeffrey's been the beneficiary of three of the wow. lucky dogs. Look Take at a that look. right there, 166 miles an hour down the straightaway. Mm. Hard breaking into this corner. That's those curbs he said he didn't want to hit. You see, they're coming down not to 50 miles an hour and, in, and below from 166 miles an hour. So you can see why the brakes are packed so heavily here. It is Jean-Francois de Moulin, another one of the Canadian contingent. As uh, there's Carl Edwards peeling off from second place. So he's making a pit stop here. As we are working with 32 laps to go, this should be his last stop. As he makes his way that long trip down pit road towards Dave Burns. Dave? And we're waiting Carl Edwards right now, slowly coming down pit road. The trouble for Carl has been the right-handers when he steps on the throttle. That's when the car gets a little bit loose, so they're going to make a chassis adjustment and a slight air pressure adjustment, plus the four fresh tires, plus the packet, packet, packet full of Snoco fuel so we don't have to worry about any fuel shortages at the end of the day, guys. 14.7 on the actual stop. As he makes his way back out, you notice that was Antonio Perez. He went by also in pit lane. Coming on to pit road now, the 62 of Brendan Gaughan finished second yesterday with Andy Lowley in the Grand Am race. They were running a GTS or GT uh, Porsche in that race. They did a very fine job. He took the first shift. They've got uh, a little bit of damage on that left front as well, Rusty. Yeah, yeah it looks, looks like. like 
RWI's body shop's going to be busy. Yeah, left front home. for some reason, Andy. It's all both cars, left front problems. Dave, you're up again. Yeah, and remember early in the race, look at the right side of that uh, car as well. He pancaked the side of that, so it's a good comeback for Brendan. They'll take on four tires for him, and then you talked about that uh, GT uh, Porsche he raced yesterday. That was good lap experience for him, just getting used to this place, hitting his marks. Four fresh tires for Brendan, and he should be done pitting for the day with a little fender adjustment there as well. And they're taking a little bit longer on this stop. They're up to 23.8 seconds before they get back out, but at least they got that fender away from the tire and the wheel. So he'll get back out, uh, shown in 29th position. We should update you. We just got word Mark Green in the 49 is now officially retired, as here comes Paul Menard. So Menard, as the top of this field, slowly but surely is making their uh, last round of pit stops here with 31 laps to go. And the busiest man in pit lane uh, is uh, back to Dave Burns. Yeah, for now, Marty, but that will change as uh, business picks up all up and down pit road. Paul Menard, the very good road racer, now comes in for four fresh tires. He told the team he needs more forward fight in his car, so they're going to make an air pressure adjustment for that. Change four tires and pull it full of fuel. Jamie? And Stephen Line, the 29, they've been chasing the balance on this car all day. Four tires, Sunoco fuel track bar adjustment for the second time today. You see him working on the left side there. Steven Light started 11th. He's down and away. Been top 10 all day, guys. Yeah, he's had a very good consistent run in this car and not a lot of damage compared to some of the others that we have seen. So a good day so far for Steven Light as he's made what should be his last stop as uh, we are still under green flag conditions and now we've gone 13 laps under green, which we we're wondering if we were ever going to get that many. But there he comes our race leader. And still making another lap, not coming down pit road. That's 31 laps to go. We're coming down to 30 laps to go this time. That is Kenny Wallace right in front of, uh, of Marcus. Kenny fell back. He had gotten himself into the top 10. He is right now 25th, the last car on the lead lap. And he's got some damage on the front end, so maybe that's part of his issue. There you see on the right front corner. And he goes a lap down, but it, uh, the thank you fans for the 5,000 and plus that uh, donated to help get him over $100,000 that they needed to come to this race. And uh, it has been an interesting story. It's been even been picked up by the Canadian media up here. And uh, so a great experience for the Herminator. Great experience right now for Marcus Ambrose as here comes Boris said now Boris Peels off. He uh, was running in the uh, top six positions as he makes his way slowly down pit lane for what should be his final stop. We're going to go uh, with uh, Justin Fiedler over the wall on this one. Here we go. Five off. Five on. Roll the tire, roll the tire. Five on. There you go. Hit five on. Done. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. 19 seconds for the team. Not the fastest that we've seen, uh, but also not the slowest. And Boris back out on what should be his final run towards the checkered flag. Marcus Ambrose passes the pit lane entrance again, so he's going to make yet another lap. Uh, somebody real slow. I just uh, saw it on the very top of the screen there coming down the front straightaway. Marcus went blowing by and it gives you an idea as we pull back. So it's uh, looks like it's Morgan Shepard that we're being told then. Yes, he is finally getting back up to some speed. Uh, that's but Brent Rowe in the or Brent Rowe, I'm sorry, uh, as he uh, slowed down and then all of a sudden did start to pick back up. Well, we just got word that uh, that pit stop for the 09 while we were focusing on uh, what was happening with uh, Justin Fielder, they have gotten a penalty. Uh, they rolled a tire outside the box, so That's they're going to have to come through. through. Yeah, they're going to have to come back through. So you had to do a pass through. Roll the tire. Andy, I'm watching Marcos Ambrose right now. He has got, I believe he's in his uh, window right now around. to make it. Yeah, Jean-Francois has uh, turned it around. Trying to get back out on track. He's had a very rough day. As you can tell, he's gotten his nose punched in. It's been eventful. And then some. 
Tell you what, if Marcus doesn't get that car down pit road pretty quick, he might get hung out he'll, there if a caution flag happens. He'll be coming this time. He's got to get that car down pit road right now. They get in trouble if well, he doesn't. And remember, he's in the hairpin, so he's got a little ways to go to the entrance, but I think he'll pit this time. Remember, he has led the most laps. It's Tony Reigns. He was running a 14th. Tony's in the pits for his final stop. A good run for Tony going right now. Uh, and, and we'll get back to Marcus in just a moment as we watch the Long John Silver's crew. At 17.9 seconds. And all tires are in the box. Yeah, but Marcus Ambrose bypassed pit lane yet again. And well, and, and we better point out, Marcus led both the most laps last year and the year before. And here he comes one more time, stretching it another lap. And uh, both those races, things happened that right, kept him from victory. This time. Okay, we're here and they're going to pit this time. This time. The only, the only risk here is if, if the caution comes out now, but before he can get in, he's going to lose a lot of track position. Now, if he makes it into pit lane before the pit, before, before the caution, what happened to fault? He'll be on equal ground with everyone and no problem at all. And here's Stephen Wallace now. He's in for his last stop. Just gas only. You know, we saw him just a few laps ago get tires after he had a tire rub so they can just get fuel. They're telling him to go. He is uh, now shown in 26th position, one lap down. And Kyle Busch peels off from third. Jamie? I'll tell you, Marty, they really thought that the damage was going to hurt this car severely. Kyle Busch hasn't said a word. Four tires, they took a tear off off the windshield, filled it up with fuel, and he's down and away. And J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 33, making his second ever start in the Nationwide Series for Kevin Harvick Incorporated. Had a good run. He came in. He was about seventh. Car has been pretty good. They battled with the center of the turns, but the car has gotten better the longer runs. And now that it's cooling down a little bit, you see him putting on the left side tires. From the tape on the front, he's down and away, 15.3. And as you finish up, we find out bad news for Tony Raines. Too fast entering pit lane, so he is going to have to come in and serve a penalty. And he was having a top 15 run which for that team is excellent. But it's going to go for naught as he'll have to come back down. Yeah, we've pit heard lane. How, just how hard it is getting down this pit lane without getting caught speeding. And there is uh, Victor Gonzalez Jr. He is the first ever from Puerto Rico to qualify for a nationwide series event. He was running in 16th place, had worked his way back through the field. We hadn't really seen him all day, but uh, he, here he was in a top 20 position. And, Pit stop taking a little bit of time, 22.6 seconds. And here comes Marcus Ambrose, finally making it to pit lane. And you're breathing a sigh of relief because well, you were worried about it, him well, getting if I'm nailed. his crew chief and his team, I would be breathing a sigh of relief. Now that he's on pit road, he can make his stop and uh, no problem. He can make it from here, and he's the one that's going to have the most fuel and uh, plenty of cushion to make it to the end. Let's go back to Dave. And Marty, he of course has led about three quarters of the race today so far. No adjustments to the car on this stop. Again, packing it full of fuel and, uh, you know, setting up for the end of the race, which could go longer than scheduled if there's a green white checkered. Four fresh tires and he's out of here. Shannon? On this Dave on the same fuel run as the 47 as Max Pappas in this one car. Remember, he started in the back of the field. No adjustments for this car. Four tires and fuel. Jamie. And Brad Coleman, it was four tires. A tear off air pressure adjustment and fuel. The 20 is down and away. Good stop. You mentioned how many laps Ambrose has led. Uh, he has locked in the, the five points, even though he's not in the championship. Uh, he's led 32 of the laps so far. Andrew Ranger has uh, 10 laps led. Kyle Busch has not led. And the only other race he has not led this year is Las Vegas. So uh, Kyle's still not up front. How about uh, Mr. Villeneuve? That is your new race leader because he has yet to make a last pit stop. So uh, we're hearing that he's probably going to come in on the next lap. But uh, at least for now, the Quebec faithful will be up in their seats. And right behind him is Jason Leffler, who is running right in position with him in second. I'm seeing a few more raindrops. Whoops, got another car spinning down in turn number 10. And that's Jeffrey Earnhardt. So Jeffrey uh, has got a problem. He had gotten three of those laps back through the lucky dog. And let me correct uh, something. I, I, we missed it, but I want to pick up Ambrose has was Pass out in front yeah, of Villanova. Pit. He don't did pit. get out in front. Don't. In fact, there he is. So we, we thought that uh, Jacques got past him, but uh, that is not the case. So let me correct that. So Marcus comes out, and here is where 
Jacques Villeneuve is going to yeah. pay the price. Yeah, you're going to see right here where the real problem is with getting caught out on the racetrack and not have, having made that stop because Villeneuve and Leffler are in second and third. Let's see where they line up on this restart. And you'll see how much work they're going to have to do. Well, I think I saw Leffler coming down. Yes, he is coming down pit lane. Well, so the pit road with I think the pit road was closed when he came in. Well, we'll check. I don't think he could have gotten on pit road before the caution came out and that pit road closes the second the caution comes out. Well, they are going to go ahead and uh, do the stop. So we'll wait to see what NASCAR officials say. He's either going to get a very big break or a very big case of heartburn. We ran 19 green flag laps. Yeah, that was our longest run. That was it? by 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 yeah, a lot. long stretch. <laughs> I know one thing: the longer these guys run, the more tore up these cars are. Look at the front of this thing: the left front fender, the nose, the right front fender. It looks as though when they try to outbreak a guy, they slide up into him. They've been knocking the fenders in on both sides. Seeing a lot of damage with these cars. Well, this is our record-setting sixth caution in our third trip here to Montreal, and Jason goes back out. We're still waiting for word from NASCAR as to whether or not uh, he is going to have to serve a penalty. Uh, because of uh, coming down possibly too soon or too late after the caution coming out. Jason doesn't look worried right now. The lights are see on. The flag. There's a pit the road closed yeah, flag closed. right there waving. You see Jason Leffler now making a pit stop, and that'll draw a penalty for okay. sure. So a tough break for uh, Jason, who was another one in that last group last night. If you weren't with us in qualifying, it was very dark. And uh, a lot of the guys just could not see, and it really hurt their qualifying efforts. So as we continue under our sixth caution, it is Marcus Ambrose in front of Villeneuve, Ranger, Edwards, and Justin Marks. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Bottom of your screen, that is Jacques Villeneuve on his last pit stop as he got caught by this caution here at the Napa Auto Parts 200 at Montreal. And uh, so it's going to really move him back. Right now, it is, um, I'm trying to see where they have him coming out of the rotation here. Give me just a second. They're showing him in 14th position, guys. And the only thing that helped him was there were several others in the same boat. And there were quite a few cars that did pit after he did, so. All right, let's take you back and show you what happened to Brad Coleman because he had some issues. Now they had some uh, issues with controlling tires. See the front tire, nobody's touching it. It's just rolling back to the pit wall and also the rear tire uh, not being controlled. Yeah, it's outside the box, the guy, uh, and, and he doesn't well, pick no, it that, up. That's fine where it's sitting, as long as it's on the inside half of the okay. pit box. But anyway. Penalty nonetheless, he's... Uh, yep, Brad's got the penalty. He's coming back. So he was running in the top six. And you can see where he's uh, currently shown in 15th, but he's still going to have to uh, serve the penalty. His high was as much as second. And the tough part, this is his last race driving for Joe Gibbs this year. And he, he had a good run going. He really did. He looked really good out there. Now he's going to have to drive harder to get this thing back through the pack because he's a ways back right now, that's for sure. And, guys, we can tell you he has already served the penalty, so he is in 15th as a result of the post race penalty position. So let's take a look at our Holiday Inn race summary as we still are under our sixth caution here. We've had uh, four different leaders in the race with uh, six total lean changes between Ambrose, Ranger Villeneuve, and Carl Edwards. Our speed under green, 61 and a half miles an hour. 25 cars right now on the lead lap. And we've had 16 total laps of caution on this 2.7 mile layout. 10 cars out of the race as the field slowly makes its way down towards turn number 10. Give us an opportunity to take another commercial break at this stage. Well, who is going to win this race? Well, fuel should no longer be an issue for anybody. So let's find out together here at Montreal. Marcus Ambrose in search of his first career NASCAR win. Robbie Gordon behind him. Robbie Gordon to the inside for the lead. Ambrose goes back on him. Well, who is leading the race? When did the caution come out? The black flag me after the race. Here. They are putting the black flag up for Robbie Gordon. And indeed, Gordon will hit Ambrose. I'm not mad. 
I'm just disappointed. Marcus Ambrose, your leader, having trouble. He goes too fast into pit lane, has to serve a pass-through penalty. Despite all this, Marcus is in third. You know, we've dominated the race twice uh, here in two years and haven't closed the deal, so I'm just bitterly disappointed. You know, I'm just, I feel a little robbed. Uh, you know, we dominated today's race, so what can you say? And for the third year in a row, Marcus Ambrose is dominating. He's led the most laps again, already at 35 and counting, but there is weather on the way. Uh, we looked at the radar, and there is a chance that we could get wet again, as we see it right there. Each one of those lines is 10 miles, so they're about 30 miles, and now 20 with that one cell where it's bright yellow is the one we're keeping our eye on, as, uh, boy, it would not would not want to see that happen. These guys have raced too hard today. Here is Marcus, and uh, boy, he has uh, done very, very well. We mentioned earlier about how he has finished no lower than third in the last four Nationwide Series road course events. In fact, today, he's now led the most laps in three of the last four Nationwide Series road course races. He's got to be feeling pretty good right now. He's got plenty of fuel in that car. He doesn't have a dent in it. He's in great shop and leading this race right now, but he's got Andrew Ranger alongside of him. And we saw some previous videos that Andrew Ranger is a pretty aggressive driver, and there's really no love loss between these two drivers. Let's get an update from Dave Burns. As they're coming to Green Marty, just found out that those spring rubbers, we said they jammed into the rear springs to help the uh, car not roll so much. Well, they didn't do that. And guess what? Marco stopped complaining, and he's still leading the race. <laughs> they never put him in, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great story. Let's uh, update three other cars. Brad Coleman did not serve his penalty. They're moving him to the rear, so he's going to lose about 15 spots. He was 15th when we brought him out of commercial. Now he's going back to the back of the field. That'll put him 25th. Also, Jason Leffler to the rear because he pitted when the pit lane was closed. And also Jason Keller for a penalty as well as he is going to restart at the rear of this field. So pace truck pulls off. Ambrose in the 47 alongside is Mr. Andrew Ranger. Can he get his first ever nationwide series win in his sixth start? We're going to go about to find out as we are getting ready to run lap number 51 of 74 here at Montreal. Oh boy, does Ambrose really slow Carl down. And Ranger is the loser on that deal because he knew he had to stay behind first place Boy, coming across the line. Out of shape there. He's yeah. right on Ambrose. He's, and he nudges he's inside. In. It's going to be a drag race down through here. Looks like Carl's got the advantage. He used the chrome horn. Will it work? Down into the corner. He's got the preferred line. Hang on. Here we go. Now it's back in the favor of the 47. They're rubbing door to door. Oh, man. That was a great race through those two corners. Marcus Ambrose got out with the lead. And look at Kyle Busch. He's trying to work his way around Andrew Ranger right behind him. Here comes the old nine underneath. You saw that. As that is, Boris said, he's got a position as he gets around Paul Menard. J.R. Fitzpatrick a little bit further back. And these guys have got to drive hard right now because well, 23 laps to go. Speaking of driving hard, looks like Stephen Wallace is off in the gravel. A little too hard. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Maybe going around a little bit more. That's going to cost him quite a few spots. Meanwhile, up front, it is still Ambrose in front of Edwards. Then it's Ranger. There's Kyle. Look at this. This is a battle for positions. Menard's trying to come back. Kyle lights him up. Man, he is pushing hard. Kyle Bush is in that 18. Boris said gets underneath the 98. There's J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 33. Brendan Gaughan saying, get me out of this. Well, Menard and Boris said are going at it right here. They've been racing side by side for almost this whole lap. Gone got a, gets the advantage. Yeah, Gone got a little too wide there. He is running for position there. He is not a lap down, so uh, he is running in ninth place right now. Coming through there is Boris still holding off uh, Fitzpatrick, but he uh, gave the position back to Menard. So here they come. On the entry to turn six, just be careful getting in there. Now you hear there's some gravel down there in turn six. That's where Stephen Wallace went off the racetrack. Jacques Villeneuve. 32 goes underneath. Can he make it stick wow. more? You want to talk about some dirt tracking. And and well, listen to the crowd. Debris. Listen to the crowd. Caution is out for that debris over there. Yep, and then here we come to our seventh caution here on lap number 53 okay. of 74. Villeneuve, he restarted in 13th place. He's up to eighth after just a lap or so of green. You could hear the fans really cheering for him. 
Ambrose is saying, oh, not another caution. Let's just let, let me go and hide from all these guys. No, there's the gravel. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I guess you could call that a little bit of debris. Well, that's a lot of gravel right <laughs> now, there. Now, NASCAR has been accused of uh, throwing those phantom cautions. Well, there's no phantom about that one. <laughs> Steven was right position to get that lucky dog. It looks, he looked at him, he's just upset. Doggone it, I was so close. Actually, it looks like it will go to uh, Stanton Barrett. Looks like he's talking to Yeah, him. he's talking Richie. on the radio. He's telling them what happened here. He's just frustrated he's right himself. now. Well, he finished in the top 10 here uh, last year. Here's what happened, and this is, this is why all the gravel ends up out on the corner. Gets in the throttle and just gets that thing too far around, trying to get the thing back on the track. Should have kind of just got out of the little easier, but I tell you, when you get stuck in that gravel and you slow down too much, it'll just dump you right in it, lock you down in it. He didn't want that to happen. As he rides off in the cloud of dust. Well, Andy, 22 laps to go. Do cautions breed cautions now this late in the race? Well, it looks like uh, everybody's temperature is coming up and the intensity level comes up. Well, I know it's a kiss of death by bringing it up, but we really have not had any major deals into turn one and two. We've had a few minor, you know, incidents where guys have gotten loose, gotten turned a little bit, but we haven't had the big one, you know, like we had two years ago here where we had like a five, six car stack up. There's still time. I know. That's why I said it's probably the kiss of death. Yeah, 22 laps is a long way to go. It really is. And so well, he's not over, that's for sure. The other thing is, we're not sure what NASCAR would do if we get rain at this point. We're past the halfway mark. If you're a crew chief, you got to be thinking about what if we get the rain and they just say, hey, we're not going to make everybody make all those changes. We'll call the race like we did last year, short of 74 laps. Yeah, that's not, and we haven't heard from NASCAR what they're going to do. And uh, But that being an unknown with the crew chiefs, all you can do is just race with what you have. And that's a, a dry racetrack right now. And uh, if that happens, then they have to just make, NASCAR has to make that call. It's going to take a while to change these things over from a dry condition to a wet condition. We're past halfway. We all know that past halfway is an official race for NASCAR. Guys, I'd have a hard time believing this late in the race they'd come in and change these cars all over. I think they'd call it a race. But you know what? I have been wrong many times. <laughs> Well, we mentioned the fact that Stan Barrett would get the uh, lucky dog to get back around. There is your top five. We'll step aside for a quick break here at Montreal. We're under our record-setting seventh caution. Well, you saw the threatening clouds off into the distance. We had a report of some lightning in the area as well. We'll uh, keep our eye on that for obvious reasons. We got a lot of camera people high in the sky. We've got uh, another in-race reporter as uh, Ron Fellows is out of this event, but uh, Marcus Ambrose is willing to talk to us. Probably like 15 minutes, but it'll be here. That's what they're thinking. Hey, Marcus, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? I sure do, Rusty. Um, I'm going to struggle talking to you because I've got to try and save fuel at the same time. And I have trouble doing two things at once, so I'll give it a go. Okay, buddy. Looks like you're having a great race right there. Just keep it going. We'll get out of your ear. I think it's just going great. I'm uh, really excited about how we've run so far. Uh, who knows what's going to happen here? We're fighting the rain and I'm fighting calm. So uh, we'll see what happens. All right, Marcus, you know you got weather coming right now. Is this a big concern of yours? Your pit crew talking to you about this? Yeah, it's a concern, but uh, we're leading the race, so it's less of a concern for us than others. What I'm really worried about is probably Carl putting a bumper to me like he did on that last restart. Uh, you know, we've built a good friendship over the last uh, couple of weeks driving that sports car, but he's sure put that to the test. <laughs> Okay, well, it looks like you got to drive pretty aggressive and uh, stay away from his front bumper. So good luck with it, buddy. We'll talk to you later. All right, so since we talked to Marcus, uh, let's give equal time to his uh, sports car compatriot who, well, didn't make it through the warm-up lap yesterday, but we won't talk about that right now. Let's talk about what's happening here. Carl Edwards, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? I have no plan as of yet. Hey, Carl, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Hey, Rusty, I got you. How's it going? Pretty good, buddy. Got yourself up to second position right now. How's that car handling for you? Uh, the old uh, City Financial Fusion is okay. It's pretty good. It's been a lot of fun racing today. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to run some more green flag runs. It looks like that rain uh, over there over the city is coming. So hopefully we can get this City Financial Fusion, uh, you know, in front of uh, Marcos here and, and go take off. 
Well, it looks like Andrew Ranger and Andrews Marcus, no love between these two guys right now. So I guess you're aware of that. And Marcus was just talking about it, got a little concern there. But you two guys were teammates in that Daytona prototype race. And I know he had some problem, but maybe you two can get it home as teammates also. Well, Tim, I didn't know there was uh, something going on there. What happened between them? A little complaining going back and forth in radio. <laughs> Let's see if they can sort it out. But we know tensions are building right now. 20 laps to go, and the rain is coming. At them four, man. Uh, it's going to be some drama, so stay tuned. All right, thanks for talking to us. All right, thanks, Rusty. I want to go back to what we talked about a little bit earlier. NASCAR has not decided what they would do if we get rain, and it looks like it could be potentially heavy. That is rain over to the right side of the screen uh, across that trestle bridge. So if you are a crew chief, are you telling your guy get as many positions as you can now? Because if we get wet, we don't know. That could be it. Well, with 20 laps to go, I'm telling him that anyway. So <laughs> it's just as hard as you can go. I mean, you're going to try to get all you can get. And uh, you can't control the weather. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. So uh, you just go for every spot. I, I think you're going to see the intensity level come up because it could end at any second. And we heard that from Carl. He was talking about all he wants to do is get, try to get in front of Marcus. Okay, and we talked to the guys, and they said if you really lean on these brakes, you're going to get about six or seven laps before they are just going to be going to the floor. So we still have more than 20. So what do you do there, driver? Well, you, you can't do anything. You just got to go for it right now. You got to get yourself in a position. We are pretty confident that rain's going to be here before this race is over. And look, you got Kyle Busch there. You got Andrea Ranger running third right now. He doesn't care about points. He wants to win this thing. And we saw him before. He's an aggressive driver. He's a good driver. J.R. Fitzpatrick's back there. You know, he's running six. Boris said, Velenuve, all of them. They want good runs. So I expect right now they're going to get very aggressive in turn one and two to make that happen. Well, still no official word from NASCAR. And the lights are still on on the pace truck because they're trying to get that uh, stone debris cleaned up and there off into the distance you get a great view and we may not have that view for long uh, our camera guys are, are like lightning rods and whenever there's lightning in the area we're going to take care of them and so we may have to bring those guys down but we'll keep you posted the rain tires are out and on the wall and waiting for instructions should we need them all right what we're going to do is take our final break we have about 19 laps to go here if the rain will hold off. That is a very big if. Stay with us to see what happens. Field for you in the top five. It is Marcus Ambrose, Carl Edwards, Andrew Ranger, Kyle Busch, Paul Menard, Boris Sed is sixth, J.R. Fitzpatrick seventh, Jacques Villeneuve eighth, Brad Keselowski has fought his way back to ninth, Stephen Light rounds out your top ten. And as we mentioned, we have no word yet from NASCAR as to whether or not they would wet, sit out the rain, put everybody into the pits and change over, and possibly call this race short. Let's hear from some of the crew chiefs. Jamie? Well, Paul Wolf will check in with him again. Andrew Ranger, his driver, sitting third right now. First time for you ever sitting here and dealing with this. You have rain tires out there. Paul, what do you want to see happen in the coming moments? Well, right now we're a few laps short. We've kind of been uh, playing the weather deal all race, kind of tracking where that's at. And um, we feel like it's going to get here before the end of the race, so we should be in good shape. Uh, really had nothing to lose. Andrew's done a good job, and uh, Ride Makers Toyota's been good all day. So um, we'll just kind of wait and see what the weather does and uh, go from there. Okay, so what happens if the rain does come? NASCAR says, okay, come in and put rain tires on. Then what happens? Yeah, I mean, we're prepared for that, and, and we feel like Andrew uh, did a really good job yesterday in the rain, so uh, not really a concern. We'll, uh, we'll just uh, play what's dealt and uh, see what happens. Well, you heard him. He's a few laps short right now. If we go green, we'll have to sit and wait, Dave. Marcus Ambrose is the leader. Uh, Frank Kerr, what's on your mind? <laughs> well, Mother Nature looks like it's uh, ready to knock on us here. You know, we'll see what happens here, you know, what NASCAR is going to do because the rain is coming. Um, and we'll be out front, so that would help, you know, with the weather. Your but, opinion is they should probably just call it, right? Well, as, as heavy as this rain's coming, you know, it's really not going to be safe for anybody, um, you know, people in the stands and, and for the racer. So it's up to NASCAR, and we'll have to wait and see. All right, Marcus has got the upper hand right now, Shannon. Yeah, down here with Mark Reno uh, calling the shots for Max Pappas. Some of you guys may be wondering why he fell back in the field. He had some problems down here, had to come down pit road. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm not real sure why NASCAR made us come in. Uh, they told us earlier about our bumper bar, and we worked on it on the green flag stop, and our pit official said it was fine. 
we left and they waited about three laps later and made us pit again. Uh, it had been like that for 25 laps. I have no idea. They wasn't in danger of falling off. Um, I don't know why one official says it's okay and the other one says it's not, but that's the way it is. Well, they did have a bumper bar sticking out. They had to come down pit road and cut it off. But we saw Max Pappas move through the field at the start of this race. Started at the back, moved up to the top 10, got about 19 laps to go. So watch that one car. Yeah, they brought him in on lap 50. We're working lap 56, and it has dropped him back to 20th position. And you're wondering why, why is Andrew Ranger got to save fuel? Well, remember this. Ranger stopped on lap 41. Ambrose stopped on lap 47. That's the big difference. You're talking about 2.7 miles every single lap. Uh, we heard Paul Wolf say he was playing this weather game. He could see that it was coming and uh, the race would not likely get to the end without having some rain. All right, here we go. Coming down for the restart and we are starting to feel raindrops already as they stand in the grandstands and we'll wait for the green flag here at Montreal. One more time, we're gonna go green, completing our seventh caution of the day. Ambrose closest to you on driver's right. And again, he does that slow approach and then hammers the throttle heading towards one. So far, so good for everybody. Kyle Busch tried the outside, didn't get anything from it, but boy, Marcus gets a great restart again. Yeah, that's a very clean restart. I expected a lot more action in turns one and two, but gets single file pretty quickly here. Oh, he had to get that good restart because the guy he was worried about is that 11 car right there, Ranger. But he got away from him and he's clear sailing right now. But Carl Edwards, don't count him out. This guy's been fast all day long. Okay, the trick now is, is how long is this track going to stay dry and is it going to catch one of these guys off guard if we happen to get rain on one end of the track before the caution can come out? Oh, Carl takes a defensive line down that long straightaway, going to force Ranger to take the outside. Carl saying, welcome to NASCAR, son. Just block, he's just blocking him off right there. He's doing what he's got to do. Ranger is all over Carl Edwards. Well, we thought we would see this, that these guys, and you heard from his crew chief, they are playing the rain game, and you can see the debris and tree limbs and leaves literally being blown all over this racetrack. The wind has really picked up. Okay, hey, little gets a shot from, yep. from Ranger. Little chrome horn action. Meanwhile, guy who's loving it is that guy in the 47. Marcus has pulled out to a, a sizable lead, probably about seven, eight car lengths. And we're getting rain on the window of our booth here at the track here in Montreal, Canada, but the track is still dry enough that you're staying green. You saw Kyle Busch looking in, take a look on uh, Andrew Ranger. He had no opportunity there. Marcus continues to pull away as uh, he has opened up. It is at least a seven, 10 car length lead now, heading down into one. Two seconds, in fact, on the clock. If you take a look at the 60 car right to right behind it, 18 car behind Ranger, Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards are points leaders. The guys are racing for the championship. Edwards just can't seem to gain any ground on Kyle because he's just too close. Look at Ranger, to making Ranger's the move on Carl Edwards. Got the position. The yes, sir, and Kyle Busch is right behind of Edwards. There's Kyle, side by side, first and second in the points. Kyle has yet to lead a lap. Edwards has led two today. We mentioned earlier how Kyle has been involved in numerous incidents and still has managed to keep coming back and he's waving, <laughs> he's letting him know, saying, okay, it's cool. It's always uh, important to peak at the right time. Kyle Busch is peaking at the right time. Ooh, look at that. I, I was whoa, looking. whoa, 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 whoa. Now. In trouble, I, yeah, I, he was a little hot. Hang on, he almost gets off to the edge there. And he ran into the track, it's still call. good. Just watch yourself down here. You see, we're starting to get the raindrops and uh, this is gonna start playing a factor. This track's gonna get a little damp. Carl retakes the position. Listen to the crowd. They see that uh, 32 car there right alongside the 88. Oh, That's their guy. Contact. Oh, and he gives him a little nudge. They're still hoping for Jacques Villeneuve to be able to try and pull something out for the Quebec faithful. Well, Marcus Ambrose has just been stellar all day, all week. A matter of fact, that car, that car's just been perfect. Andy, look at that—not even a dent on that car. 
He has been the class of the field. But remember, he dominated the last two years we've been here and fell short both times. And last year was basically a mistake on his part where he got too fast into pit lane and got the speeding ticket. Yeah, you see Carl Edwards with his hand out the window. I think that's a signal to the flagger Ruining that they have everywhere. rain on the yeah. racetrack. And that's the, what the caution is for. Full course caution. Yep, and there it is. Full course caution, our eighth of the day with now 16 laps to go, and the rain is beginning to fall harder here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. They threw that caution just in time because it did start raining hard right here at our booth and at the start-finish line. So now the question becomes, what does NASCAR do? Do they try and wait this out? Or do they order the teams? Uh-oh, trouble just as the caution came out. As uh, That is DJ Kennington. Well, he's pounded something there. Yeah, that's right at turn 13. Oh, look look at the, uh, he obviously got loose earlier. Take you back, see if he got any help on this deal. That's turn 13 right at pit in. Oh, oh you see parts flying back there. Uh, he got turned in the straightaway, so he had some help. Uh, that's the tail end of it. Kennington, second in the Canadian Tire Series points. He finished fourth in today's race that ran earlier. And he was running in second until Andrew Ranger gave him the chrome horn at that point. Heading into turn two, we showed you that a little bit earlier. Well, that's a pretty big lead, but Marcus is already out there. The caution is out, and the guys still haven't caught him. So <laughs> what a great day he's having. Yeah, he's even leading right. by 10 car lengths under yellow. <laughs> Problems for Stephen Wallace. And a guy not having a good day right there, Stephen Wallace. Really been struggling all day long. That's between turn seven and eight, uh, and can't get any wider than that from that position. He's right underneath our camera. Now you get an idea where that happened. And uh, he's one lap down right now in 28th. He would get the uh, lucky dog, but uh, I don't think right now that's what anybody's worried about. Because uh, well, the big question is, what's NASCAR going to do yeah, here? Are they going to run it. with rain tires and, and uh, keep racing, or are they going to call it? Let's listen in uh, on the onboard, see what happens. Work here on the nose, too, fast, back Yeah, simple. Whoa. If I get a look at everything next time by, Greg, yeah. like I said, you just take care of making that sure thing just said. swapped on him. Oh, 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 no, it didn't. Oh, he got help. We just and, didn't and see it. Got and, him. Now, and now you know the rest of the story. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, Antonio Perez in the uh, 86. So <laughs> from the onboard, it's like, well, what happened? There was nobody else there. But then the exterior view. Oh, a couple laps earlier. Oh, a little, little nervous. Yeah, yeah. here. That is Perez in the 86. And maybe a payback. All right, while we're under this caution, let's uh, hear from uh, Pit Road again, uh, Jamie Little. Well, Jason Ratcliffe, crew chief for Kyle Busch up here, looking at telemetry, looking at the weather. Yeah. Jason, what do you think? Is NASCAR going to say, bolt on some rain tires and let's go? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I thought cancel qualifying, and they didn't. And it turned out okay. I mean, the conditions stayed the same other than it got dark, and I think it hurt maybe the last couple of groups. But uh, we're prepared. These guys on the interstate battery team are, are prepared to put the windshield wiper on, put the wet tires on, and go after it. Kyle's done a great job all day. Uh, it's his first time here, and actually, before the race started, the only laps he had were in wet conditions. So uh, he's probably more prepared for that than he was dry. All right, so the fans watching, ourselves as reporters, this is fun. The rain's going to come, and for once, we can just keep racing. We don't have a long rain delay. What's it like as a crew chief? You crossing your fingers and hoping this thing ends now? Um, I think we're as prepared as anybody for the rain conditions, and, uh, you know, I know Kyle will do a good job, so it, it doesn't matter. We're, uh, either way, it'll be good. I, I, you know, I'd like for it to run a few more laps because I think we could get up there and, and maybe battle for at least the top, maybe the second or third spot. I don't think we got anything for that 47. He's pretty sporty, but uh, it doesn't matter. We can uh, we can do either way. Battling is the key word of Kyle Busch today. Started 12th, damage everywhere, Marty, and he sits fourth. All right, thanks, Jamie. And you're right, fourth, and uh, waiting to see what happens here. That's the view at, under you know a reduced speed, and as you can tell, becomes a bit of a challenge to see out of these windshields. 
especially if you don't have a wiper. And even some of the wipers we saw yesterday didn't work all that well. So let's check in at the Craftsman Tech Garage with Tim Brewer to find out what you can do to help with this problem. The biggest challenge in the rain road racing is seeing through the windshield. We've got good windshield wipers that actually clear the outside. But the other problem we have is on the inside. We actually use electric motors and hoses to blow air on the windshield to get to things where we can actually see through them because they fog up. But the best trick I've ever seen is a simple bar of ivory soap. Coming in and just putting a line here and about every five inches across the windshield, putting a line, some kind of chemical in this ivory soap keeps the windshields from fogging up. Tim Brewer's got the answer for everything as we're under our eighth caution now as uh, the rain is coming down and you can see just how hard it is. Let's uh, hear from the uh, Carl Edwards camp, Dan Stillman. Dave, I think you're there. Yep, and he is uh, standing by in a nice dry area right now. Uh, what do you think? Take place, uh, take home third place money or bolt them on and start them back up when the rain stops? Well, you know, we'll see. You know, uh, we're pretty good in practice in the rain, so... Um you know, I'd kind of like to see it uh, keep going. But, uh, you know, we're third right now. I think we can, uh, well, I'd like to do a little bit better. City Financial Ford Fusion's been running good, so uh, maybe we can uh, move up a couple spots. We uh, just saw Tim Brewer talk to us about windshield wipers and keeping things uh, clear up there. Uh, Car Chief Darrell told me you put a spring on that windshield wiper that would, uh, if it got loose, might hurt somebody. Will that windshield wiper work, or did it work in uh, practice and qualifying? Yeah, everything worked pretty good yesterday, so... Um, yeah, that's a big deal. You know, you want to keep your windshield clean and you got to keep everything from fogging up. Um, you know, we'll just see what happens. Everything's been good, though. And did you tell me you couldn't have a Swiffer in the car this year? <laughs> no, actually, that's uh, that's like the secret weapon. So uh, if all else fails, we got that. The super secret backup plan, guys. Oh, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Uh, and we're getting word that uh, NASCAR officials uh, will be bringing the cars down pit lane. And uh, we'll wait to see if that is the case. We do not know if they're going to order them yet to strap on the uh, rain tires and all the equipment that goes with it. But uh, they will take one more lap now, we are being told, around this track because they want to, I guess, get a little more work done in that area there as well as all the areas around the track. While we've got a moment, let's check our ticket to the race because we've got some great upcoming events. And, of course, uh, Atlanta, the next stop, and then on to Richmond and Dover, Kansas out to the West Coast, back to Lowe's, Memphis. That's a, the last standalone event for the Nationwide Series, October 24th. On to Texas, Phoenix, and we'll wrap it all up at Homestead, Miami, November 21st, where the official championship will be crowned. But uh, right now, it's looking pretty good for uh, Mr. Bush. I would Look pretty good. Ten races to go there, right? There's a lot of racing that's going to happen in ten races. And I'll guarantee you, all those tracks you're looking at right there, Atlanta. What about Richmond, Andy? That night race. That really gets exciting Love over there. that night racing at Richmond. Got a Lowe's I know Speedway. You I don't oh. I've seen how many trophies you've got. i got seven of them. <laughs> I like over there. Here's that's how, a nice track, <laughs> Richmond. You, you notice how he had that number memorized? <laughs> <laughs> hey, all those key tracks that I've run, I think all these drivers, the places they like the most, they memorize those things. Not just me. Boy, look at, look at that right rear quarter panel. Uh, I've, Kyle has had a lot of contact today and uh, somehow has managed to put his car into fourth position despite all of it. This, uh, this has definitely been a contact sport here at Montreal. Let, while we've got a chance, let's talk about the future here. I mean, this is the third year. The fans support this event immensely. I mean, especially if you, you bring a couple of good Canadian drivers that they can get behind and, and show that, uh, that spirit that we've seen. Um, obviously, NASCAR has said, look, we, we want to expand more in Canada, but they've said we want to wait about three more years. We want to make sure. Well, Marty, look, it's a no-brainer that this thing is hugely popular up here in Canada. These people were just dying for some type of NASCAR racing, and they've come out in groves to support this. Now, is there room in the schedule to add a cup race here? I don't know. The schedule's pretty tapped out at the moment. They're doing an awful good job with the Nationwide Series here right now, but I know Brian France, Mike Helton, the guys are really smart guys. They'll make the right decision if this, this venue justifies that. It's a pretty tight circuit. Yeah, this is my first time coming up here, and it is amazing how much these people love it, uh, this kind of racing up here, and, and how much they do support it. So I think, yeah, this has been a great experiment so far, and 
And why not take our sport uh, a little, broaden it out a little bit if there's room in the schedule? By the way, you mentioned Mike Helton. It's his birthday today. Is it really? Yeah. Well, I, happy I birthday, I, Mike. I, I, I won't tell how old because they didn't put that in the media guide. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, let's check in uh, on what's happening with the 09. Brad Parrott holding it down for the set heads up here. Nice and dry under this pit box. But uh, rain tires, uh, you definitely think that's an advantage, huh? Why? Yeah, Boris has got a lot of experience racing in the rain, and this Zaxby's Ford's done a great job with everybody involved, all the guys at the shop. I'm going to give a good call out to them because they really worked hard preparing this car after Watkins Glen. So thanks, Nick and the boys. But, uh, you know, he's done a great job today. Uh, now it's time to go racing in the rain. You know, uh, we had a great job in qualifying today, yesterday. Ended up uh, breaking a motor, started at the rear, and come up through there pretty strong today. So we're going to give the fans something to shout about if them Canadians aren't out there. Yeah, it's definitely been, been an eventful day for the 09. They say that there's a lot of bumps and bruises on that car. Doesn't look pretty, guys, but it's uh, fast. There, there's bumps and bruises on everybody's <laughs> car. There's very few that are in one piece. Man, Paul Menard's got a pretty good looking piece right now, but there's the 09. And yeah, that, it's, it's banged up a little bit. All right, here's the word from NASCAR. They are going to bring the cars down pit lane. They will put them on the five minute clock to make all the necessary changes, and we are going to go back to racing on wet tires. Let's tell them what they actually get to do. Well, what they can do is they can put on their, and what they have to do is put their windshield wiper on. They can, uh, they have to turn their rear light on, their defoggers. The teams will be allowed to do a standard pit stop and make adjustments. So they can put fuel in, they can make some adjustments if they need to, pulling out spring rubbers or disconnecting the rear sway bar. Uh, major adjustments cannot be made. Uh, you have to come back to pit road after the field is reset uh, if you try to make major adjustments. So if you make the time limit, you can line up back in your spot. They're going to freeze the field right here and give them five minutes to make all these changes. And remember, Paul Wolf, Andrew Rangers, the crew chief, said they played the rain game. It has just paid huge dividends for them because, remember, he was going to run out of fuel if this thing stayed green. And now they get the top off. They get the rain tires. He knows this track about as good as anybody out there. And if he can get it all done, he'll restart in second place. Yeah, so Paul Wolf uh, made a good move there. He, he gambled on that, pitted early. And so if the uh, caution had come out, he'd have got the track position. And now he knew that it was going to rain, and it worked out for him. All right, David, uh, I know one thing. This is one heck of a crowd. They are staying here strong. Marty, that's the second reason why I like NASCAR's move. First reason is because I got all this practice in the rain yesterday, but these people haven't left. They are staying here. They've got their rain gear from yesterday, dried it out in the sun today, and they are sticking around. They want to see NASCAR have these guys put the rain tires on and go for it. They are not going to be disappointed. As you can see, the rain just continues to pour down as uh, we're going to be getting a lot of interesting action when we go back to well, green flag racing. I guarantee these drivers and the crew chiefs are talking about vision right now. That's the biggest problem they had yesterday when they were qualified and they couldn't see real well. So they're probably putting a different product on the windshield, getting their windshield just right, the windshield wipers, trying to get the fog, and even maybe one of those Swiffers they, they clean the inside of the windshield with. Yeah, you're right about the vision because the traction is going to be about the same for everybody. Uh, but the vision is going to be the big deciding factor. Who can see the best can, will have an advantage. So a lot of teams have prepared for this and prepared well. We'll see who, who's done a good job and maybe uh, who hasn't. And, and I'm still curious to see if anybody uses uh, Tim Brewer's tip about the, the ivory soap to keep well, it from fogging up I, on the inside. I doubt if they do that because we just now did find out from Tim Brewer about that. These yeah. teams probably don't know that, so they're probably not prepared for that one. Well, some, some of them have some really exotic blower systems that are uh, getting air up on the windshield and, and taking care of it that way. So, Dave, uh, nobody jiving all over the car because everybody has to get in and the clock will start all at once, correct? Yeah, Marty, that is correct. The crews are waiting right now, and they're waiting for their uh, crew chiefs to call them over the wall there. And then you're going to see which of the uh, options they do, whether what type of wiper they put on, whether one or two, whether they go for the rain -X or don't go. Jacques Villeneuve in the 32, he's one of those guys that does not want the rain -X because he's had some bad experiences in the past with that. So it'll be interesting to see all the different things they take advantage of and which ones they leave on the table. Well, we had a shot of you in that long view, Dave. Get an umbrella. <laughs> You're getting soaked, partner. Trying to stay out of the way of the uh, still photographers down here. I'm a good guy. All right. Hey, <laughs> listen, uh, the, the, the signal has been given. Everybody's going to work. Get the clock running. Listen to the fans. Oh, yeah. They're, they're loving they're it. They're rewarded for sticking it out. They are absolutely loving it. They know now that they're going to continue racing in the rain 
here at Montreal. Well, remember NASCAR told us that they need to totally lose this racetrack. I mean, that's gotta be so totally wet. It's gotta be raining if they're gonna go race in the rain because this track dries up awful quick and this is perfect conditions right now to run in the rain. So we have completely lost it, Andy. There's not a dry spot on this thing nowhere. This is a good call. If they're gonna do it, do it now. Four minutes, 30 seconds left on the five minute clock. And what's so important about that is you get done, you get out, you get your position back. If you are late, you lose. And the driver is so helpless at this moment. A lot of drivers down there with body damage on their cars. They're pulling the fenders out I'm seeing. They're trying to get some of the stuff fixed that they couldn't do you, under you, normal green flag runs. Yeah, you can see what they're doing with Marcus Ambrose. They're trying to get this windshield wiper adjusted properly so it cleans the part of the windshield that he wants clean, and he's having them to move it. You see they're resplining it to try to get it down lower so it clears the windshield where he wants it. There you see one of the teams using Rain-X. If you've uh, never had it on your windshield at home, it helps uh, get the water to bead up and then just dissipate and blow off. And at speed, it, it is pretty amazing what it can do. Now those tear-offs, so you saw them take off, Andy. I gotta believe I wanna get this windshield as clear as I possibly can. I'd probably get all the tear-offs that are left off of there so you get a clear view like Carl Edwards has right now. And you see someone putting a rain next, like he said, you need to put it on that clean windshield. That, that rain axe will definitely help repel that water. Uh, still helps to have that windshield wiper, and you see all the cars putting them on. Most of the cars will have a windshield wiper as well. You see they're putting a little piece of plastic over the cowl opening. That's the air intake for the engine. They'll pull it off when it gets ready to leave. Okay, there's Marcus Ambrose trying to get, uh, looks like he's changing a few things here in the cockpit. And it looks like he's going to change a helmet. Going to the wet helmet. They have a, actually a different helmet for uh, the wet. Uh, well, a uh, different, different, uh, different visor. It's so, just yeah. easier. Mm -hmm. It's like he's going to, instead of unbolting the visor off the helmet, he's just going to change the entire helmet. The backup helmet is ready with the clear visor. You saw him with a plastic baggie. It looks like he was trying to put it over the radios also to keep things dry. Andy, maybe. Yeah, that window's just open right there, and the radios sit in that hole. So if they put that baggie over that, it'll keep the radios dry. Dave? And guys, that helmet actually has better vision all the way around for Marcus Ambrose, and that is the reason that they're doing it. He also had a lot of descriptors for the team as they worked with the Rain-X. If I'm not mistaken, the V8 Supercar Series that he ran in, in uh, Australia also ran in the rain. So he said, make sure the rag is dry. Make sure you get a lot on it. That is proper Rain-X application. Jamie? And now Kyle Busch is going to stick with the same helmet, but he took it off, handed it to the crew. This is the visor he had on. As you can see, it is tinted. They're making a quick change. There's bolts. There's all kinds of things they're dealing with to put a clear visor on. They have less than four minutes to complete this change right now. They have one minute and 50 seconds to complete this change. The clock at the top of our screen counting down the time before they have to be back out yeah, in that's line. That's critical that they get that helmet back on Kyle Busch to get him out on time or he'll lose his track position. And he's sitting there in a good spot and they don't want to lose that. Kyle right now would uh, restart in 11th position. No, he'd be no, fourth. He'd be they, fourth. That's the way right. they've yeah, got him they lined up in, on our monitor yeah, right. where they just came in on pit I road. I just looked down there and uh, you're absolutely right. And there is Kyle waiting for the helmet to come back. Get down close to a minute to go. Well, here's one car that does not have a windshield so he's, wiper. He's going to rely heavily on the uh, windshield application here to try to keep, as far as the Rain-X on the windshield, to keep it clear. This must be, this is a really good team right here, this 11 team. I, I'm surprised they don't have windshield wipers ready to go for this car. And this might be a pre-planned thing as they come into it, because at speed, actually, if you put some Rain-X on there at speed, it really clears the window pretty good. The problem you have is under a caution flag, when you're running real slow, you really need that windshield wiper to clear that vision. We've actually seen the windshield wipers in the past blow off top of the windshields because of aerodynamic problems. Yeah, we see some guys under the car here under Marcus Ambrose's car, unhooking, probably unhooking the rear sway bar. I can't see, uh, it looks like they're working under the rear suspension. That'd be the most likely thing they're doing there. Also adjusting shocks, they can adjust the shock absorbers. There's Kyle's helmet. Already uh, back into the cockpit. The window net is up, yeah, 17 see, yeah. seconds. Seconds to spare. Now down to 10. You'll see the official giving the word here and everybody will line back up in their spot. Three, two, one, that's it. Car's gotta come down. Now we're waiting from NASCAR for the 
So the inspectors now will clear everybody. They'll check for the lights to make sure that they're working in the back. Now the light is mandatory. They have to have that on there. You see some of them do not have windshield wipers and that uh, is obviously okay, but uh, you have to have a, a light. That's a courtesy to the other drivers so they can see you. Well, Andy, I hope one thing. I hope all our cameras are working all around this racetrack. There's a lot of rain out here, no doubt about that. And I was worried about some of them might get shut down. But we're going to need them because I can promise right. you somebody's going around when they start this race. There's going to be some spin outs. And, and while we've got a, a moment, uh, hats off to all the crews down there. They're soaking wet. Hats off to our crew as well. This is the second day everybody has been out in this weather. And uh, they, the guys came home looking like uh, drowned rats last night. And there, there's some of the things. Don Russell is 200 feet in the air there. Don, <laughs> you're, you're a braver man than me, Gunny Dan. That's uh, tough. It, it is. It is a very difficult job. And uh, these guys, there's his view from uh, down into turn number one. So thanks, guys, uh, everybody out there from the audio and the video side for making it all work for us. Because uh, believe it or not, the, the weather creates havoc for all the electronic equipment that we have, just as it does for the guys on the race cars. Cars are fired. They're moving out. Dave, what's the latest? We talked about the things that they could take advantage of. Obviously, the windshield wiper and the rain -X for the 47. They also unhooked the rear bar, made a shock adjustment, and made some air pressure adjustments. Can't really think of anything that they didn't take advantage of, guys. Well, as you look at Marcus Ambrose, remember this. He won 27 races in his two championship seasons in the V8 Supercar Series during 03 and 04. We have seen what he has done in the last four races on the road in the Nationwide Series, as he has been absolutely stellar, never finishing lower than third in any of those four races. So the cars slowly form up behind the pace truck. And we'll be getting ready to go back to racing. Let's check in on Boris said. What's the latest there, Shannon? Well, guys, not only were teams allowed to make some modifications, the rain modifications, but the, uh, Boris said the 09, a lot of cosmetic damage, and the team really worked on it. They added some tape. They banged out some bumps and bruises that 09 car had, sent it back out, maybe make it a little more aero for uh, the last couple laps here. And Jason Ratcliffe, crew chief, standing on the wall now. You guys kind of chuckled as Kyle drove away. What are you thinking? thinking it's going to dry up pretty quick here. We're going to come back and do this again. Uh, I don't know the, I don't know how dry it can be and run these tires. The other day it dried up a little bit entering the corners and uh, they don't like it dry. So as long as it stays wet, we'll be good. But I think if it starts drying any, any bit, they're going to have to bring us back in and put the other tires back on. We got to keep an eye on those windshield wipers. Yeah, it's like a Batmobile, Dave. And I believe Paul Menard will be lining up six on this restart. Just talked with Matt Pusha, his crew chief. Uh, they didn't adjust the shocks, but they did take spring rubbers out of those rear springs, made an air pressure adjustment. And you can see the windshield wiper on the windshield for Paul Menard, and they also uh, have some Rain-X on there. Matt told me they did that earlier. So some of the things they had actually done ahead of time uh, just to uh, save themselves a little bit of time. Well, we've got a guest here in the booth, the uh, head man who makes uh, all the final decisions for NASCAR, Mike Helton. We just told everybody a little while ago, I don't know if you heard, but a happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we didn't say how old. They didn't put yeah, that well, in the media guide. I appreciate that part. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, uh, how quickly and efficiently everything has transitioned here. you got to be happy. Well, it, it, everybody in NASCAR knows these guys in the garage area are quick studies. And then uh, after last year and yesterday's qualifying, uh, I think they were prepared today and then watching the radar as the as the race went on most crew chiefs kind of anticipated uh, this this uh, moment to get here and they were ready and we're very uh, proud and kind of excited about the last 13 laps or so here to see how it comes out. Mike what was the decision to get these cars back in a racetrack and normal racing back on oval tracks if it rains we're past halfway the race is over but was it because of this it, probability to be able to get with these rain tires and make this thing finish was that it, it well it, it the the nationwide series at road courses has the wet tires and uh, uh, so this gives us an option and an opportunity to do exactly what we're doing right now and the weather circumstances presented the, the same opportunity but uh, you know we, uh, we we talked about it before the day started we talked about it as the race was progressing what we what would we do if this 
scenario. And, uh, you know, we agreed that we would, we tried to run the balance of this race if it was permissible time-wise and everything else. Uh, uh, because it's it's Montreal, the fans up here are great. They're they're incredibly supportive of this event, uh, and and it's now part of the nationwide series at road courses uh, for the wet tires to be part of it. And this is a this is kind of another step in the experience and the learning curve, I guess. Mike, this this track has been on this circuit now on the NASCAR series for three years. It looks like it's hugely popular up here. Do you see this scene here for a while? Well, I hope so, but it's a it's a great marketplace for the nationwide series. But the 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 support by the fans they set out here yesterday and and cheered and they they've got so much enthusiasm and energy and we know they're great motorsports fans here. But we wanted to make NASCAR part of their uh, favorite type of racing, and this is a good opportunity to do this. You you heard the reaction the fans when they saw you bring them in and and the rain tires were going on. Does this give you any thought about also transitioning this to the Cup Series? Well, there's always that possibility. We'll see it as the development over here takes place, and uh, there's a lot of differences. The uh, the downforce on the Cup cars isn't what it is on the nationwide car. Uh, the, the the races are longer, and, and there's a little variables there that, that keep us from moving in that direction right now. But who knows? You know, the, 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 the progress that we're making in the nationwide series, you never know. Now, the success you've seen with these guys on the rain, do you see the cup cars going to this in the future? I know you've been kind of quiet about that, but I'm going to push you a little bit, man. I think you could probably do it. What do you think? I, I think as as we do get the experience, the race teams and the drivers and the, and the, 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 the whole garage area gets more and more experience. Uh, that it is something that we might be able to look at down the road for the cup but but uh, as it stands right now the uh, like i said the, the downforce on the cup cars is a considerable difference and i think on a wet track uh, these guys really would prefer as much downforce as they can get right now <laughs> and grip mike we want to thank you for uh, taking the time to come over and talk to us and bring us up to date on uh, all the decision making process and uh, good luck with getting the rest of this race in thank you appreciate it happy our birthday buddy thank yeah you, happy birthday all right good. Uh, you want to sing no no oh, okay. no no we <laughs> were going to make rusty, we were gonna make rusty <laughs> no, no, sing no, no. that's why i was answering for rusty okay <laughs> it's clearing <laughs> up off into the distance but we've still got a wet racetrack but it doesn't matter we've got the tires bolted on and we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing here at Circa Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Quebec. Get the remaining soon to be 11 laps in. That's not going to be the case because of Goodyear's new tire, of which is much better than last year's. Uh, we talked to Patrick Carpentier yesterday, and he said it was like a day and night difference with these rain tires. And uh, you can see there are a few dry spots where there were trees protecting the, the track, but uh, still plenty wet enough that these tires should be able to go the distance. Let's get a last minute update from pit lane, Dave. All right, guys, now Marcus Ambrose will restart in the same spot he has been all day, but he told his crew, I need to get cleared over to the other side as quick as possible. Rusty, you know this, when it rains on the track, the line is the greasy, slippery part where all the oil's been laid down and everything else. He wants to get to a little bit further outside and maybe not run that curb. Well, they've always told me, I'm not a great road racer, that's for sure, in the rain, but they always told me if you're racing the rain, get out of the groove where you've been running all day long because that's where the oil and all the debris have fell. You want to get completely run offline, and that's what Marcus is actually talking about. He's not going to run the normal line. He's been running the entire race. There you see a couple of birds that are going to be relocated pretty quickly. Gives us a chance for, before we go back to green. Let's talk about next week's motorsports action because the Nationwide Series Degree V12 300 at Atlanta will be Saturday 6:30 Eastern on ESPN2, and that'll be a repeat edition of the backseat drivers. And then on Sunday, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series presented by Pennzoil at 7 Eastern Sunday night on ESPN. And then for drag racing fans, it's the biggest event of the year: the Mac Tools NHRA US Nationals presented by Lucas Oil. Qualify is next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. and 5 Eastern on ESPN2. And then the race is on Labor Day Monday at 1 Eastern, also on ESPN2. Well, Andy, I don't see a lot of standing water anywhere. It looks like the surface is in pretty good condition right now. It's going to have a lot more grip than they had yesterday qualifying. And that's what you see. A lot of guys trying to just feel, you know, feel it, feel their car, feel how much grip they have here. 
Really an unknown. They're just going to have to drive down in there. They're not going to know exactly. Well, and, and you heard the concern from uh, some of the crew chiefs that you know, if, if it dries out too fast, of course, the rubber on these tires will go away quickly. And then we saw a couple of spots where the trees had protected the track, but it looks like uh, by the time we go back to green flag racing, uh, we'll have uh, 12 to 12 laps, it says to go right now. So uh, there you see just a couple of those dry spots, but it, it shouldn't dry out that fast. Well, it, it's it's not going to dry real fast, but you see some of the dry spots under the trees right there. That's where it's what's keeping part of that track dry right there. But hey, we're going to have to watch turn one and two right now. That's the corner that I want to keep my eye on because the rule is if you go into turn one right here, you're looking off to your left right there, and you miss that and you land over here in the center portion of the racetrack, that is not where you want to be right there. If you slide off there, the rule is you got to give that position back, and I got a feeling we're going to see a little of that going on. And we have not had what we talk about, you know, the big carnage that we've seen here like two years ago in that section. But uh, again, we're talking about a whole different set of circumstances as we're back on a wet track. The biggest issue right now is going to be visibility for everybody behind the leaders right here. You see a lot of water flying up in the air. There's no rain out here right now. You're just seeing all the water being kicked up. These rain tires work real good, and the way they work is to kick that water out of the way, and you're going to see it all up in the air. It's going to be really difficult for these people right here, all these drivers, to be able to see the ones in the middle of the pack. The Montreal faithful are on their feet as we get ready to go back to green flag racing here in Quebec. And again, Ambrose gets a good jump. Carl trying to shoot underneath on the outside of Ranger. Now he's going to have the preferred line, but Ranger's going to pinch him off. Carl says, I'm not going to have any. Here comes Kyle Busch. Busch gets around both of them. Well, that was a lot cleaner than I thought it was going to be through those two corners. Three wide off a of turn two. That was something to see. And there, there, a lot of positions changed in that last corner right there. Oh, and Ranger and Carl are still going after each other. And Carl takes the position back once again. Paul Menard got a little bit sideways, but uh, Boris said was kind enough not to get into him, allowed him to get straightened back up. That's Ambrose right behind him, the wounded 18 and still fighting Kyle Busch, then Carl, then there you see Andrew Ranger. He's looking a little slick and none. Here comes Paul Menard inside of Ranger trying to take that spot. And now they're making their way down into turn eight. This is a key passing zone like we talked all day long. And this is where you're gonna see some attempts right here in the eight right now, exiting yep, turn eight. Oh, right through the mud, kept on going. And look at Ambrose. Is this guy good on a road course? Doesn't matter whether it's dry or wet. He is already opening up a big lead. Here comes Carl going to try the outside on Ranger. Ranger's got the uh, preferred position. Now he's going to duck underneath him. Do the old crossover move. Yeah, here. but uh, he gets a wheel spin. Look at the gaggle of cars behind him. But three wide there at one stretch. That was Antonio uh, Perez. Having some more more. Oh, and Stephen Wallace goes around. Yeah, look out. That Jason was an intentional Keller. move by the 86 car. He just wrecked Stephen Wallace. Stephen has got wrecked twice by the 86 car. No love between those guys, that's for sure right now. Yep. See what happens at the end of the race if we make it that far with those two. All right, back to the battle towards the front of the field. You saw Ranger. There is Carl Edwards. He's opened up a bit of ground over the 60 car, but Ambrose is checked out. Yeah, you can see how much spray is up in the air. These cars behind the leaders are really fighting that vision. All right, there is uh, the 09, Boris said. Still side by side. They've yeah. been racing all day long. And now the advantage goes back potentially to Menard as he's got the inside line. As they straighten out, Menard still has the spot, but here comes Boris one more time. 10 laps to go here in Montreal. Everybody slip sliding everywhere, but hanging on. Some really good drive. The driving improvement from last year to this year has been better, too. These guys are more comfortable, the ones that have been here more than once. Well, and also on a lot better tire. Goodyear brought a lot better tire. We got a caution out for debris in, la in uh, turns 13 and 14, which are the last two corners before the start finish line. And there it is. There it is. Course. Yeah, that, that would not be fun to hit. And that is right near the exit of that corner, the final corner onto the front straightaway. Yeah, you've talked, we've heard NASCAR say that we're not going to put up with bumper bar problems. It looks like the 27 car. He could have been the one that maybe lost the bumper. I see some damage just on that right rear corner. Oh, he was involved in He's that got a flat spin. left rear. When uh, Steven got turned, 
He also got involved. Well, Stephen's got some dad there for the bumper came from. Even Antonio Perez have been having a, a yeah, real fight out there all yeah. day long. Yeah, they've been into each other a couple of times. They need to get it settled because it's starting to affect the race now. They've had a caution because the bumper's flying on, on the racetrack, so uh, we don't need to have any more of that. Well, uh, unfortunately, we've set a record that uh, you really don't want. This is the ninth caution. It's a new nationwide series road course record for the most cautions in a single race. And we've had a total of 24 laps, almost one third of this race under caution. Well, we obviously didn't want to see that, but what we see is some domineering runs out of Marcos. So Max Papp is flying through the field. Some incredible runs we've seen out of these road racers today and just everybody in general. But uh, one thing you said earlier, Marty, that I was really impressed with is how much, how good these guys have really done from last year to this year, understanding how to race in the rain. And listen to what Mike Helton told us. If this is successful, we might move this to cup racing. Let the cup guys try it, because let's face it, those guys will know a little bit more of what's going on. That's a high talented guys out there, good crew chiefs. These guys are smart. They know how to race in the rain if they had to. All right, let's go back and show you a replay of what happened back in uh, turn 10 involving that man right there, Stephen Wallace. Okay. Eight inside, 86 inside here, inside, inside. Yep, there it is. And then that's Jason Keller. And then this is what happened to his teammate, Brendan Gaughan. He got turned going into turn number one by the 81 of Alex Tagliani. And I almost, saved I almost saved it and didn't lose any positions. He had a good run. He was 11th when this caution flag come out. He was looking great in that U.S. Fidelis car. He has dropped down to 24th position because of the spin. Marcus Ambrose, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? Rusty. All right, buddy, looks like you have a little time to talk right now. That car looks pretty good in the rain out there. What's it feeling like? Well, it doesn't feel great, but I guess it feels better than most others out here. The experience pays off in the rain. I've had a lot of wet weather driving, and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to search for the, for the good line here, not to spin those rear tires. But it's like this race will never end. I mean, I've been trying to win this race for three years. I get to this point of the race, and... Something goes wrong, and I just hope that I can bring it home here and just uh, seal the deal. Well, Marcus, if there's any track that owes somebody something, it's probably this track owes you something, but I bet you're concerned about those double file restarts. Yeah, I sure am. I got Kyle behind me as well, and, uh, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, I, I've, I've tended to get one on him, and he's probably going to try and get one on me now on this, uh, this restart. But we'll see what happens. I've got absolutely nothing to lose. I'm here to win the race. I don't care about points. I'm just trying to uh, win this race for team in Amaral. And uh, you may see a little bit of the Tasmanian Devil come at me here at the end. Well, I appreciate you talking to us. I guarantee you, old Brad Doherty's at home listening to this broadcast, pulling for you pretty hard. Yeah, he should be up here with us for support. <laughs> All right, thanks, bud. Of the top three last year, Ron Fellows, Patrick Carpentier, Marcus Ambrose, only Ambrose is going to be around for this finish. Now, of course, you heard uh, Marcus talk about the history he has with Kyle. Let's go back to the Glen, and boy, this is where he made that surprising move, caught Kyle off guard completely, went over the rumble strips into the grass and took the lead and went on for the win, his second in a row at the Glen. And then Kyle also came up at the end of the race and said, hey, I didn't really appreciate that. That's one thing about Marcus Ambrose. He's not afraid to get aggressive if he needs to to win a race. Well, that's exactly what he said. The Tasmanian Devil may come out in me. Well, he, he's had a key thing right there because the Tasmanian Devil, that's, that's him, buddy. And he's not racing for points, just like he said. He just wants to go out there and win. He doesn't care. He'll get rough if he's got to. Well, how about the other end of this equation? Let's talk to Jason Radcliffe. Jamie? Crew chief, we've talked to him a few times, and for good reason. You guys are making gains now. You gained two spots on that start, but you came on the radio and said, stay out of the groove. How much is that helping him? Well, yesterday when we were practicing, uh, and you know you hear that from road course racers, so I'm not, don't accuse me of being an expert, but uh, just, you know, yesterday when we were practicing, it was like our car was, was better. It would break better when we were out of the groove, and, it, you know, so I just want to remind him of all the things he learned yesterday, and, and Looks like he's doing a pretty good job. Well, you just got reminded about what happened back at Watkins Glen when these two got together. Same scenario now, double file restart. What do you think is going to happen here? 
Uh, I'm just hoping we keep up with the guy. I mean, he's uh, this is his environment. I mean, this is his deal. We know he's uh, this. This is what I guess he grew up doing. So he's probably praying for rain. He's just driving away, and Kyle's going. I don't. I don't know how he's doing it, but we're uh, you know we're still learning about the rain. Um, you know how to set up for the rain and or go from from dry to wet and things like that. So we probably have a lot to learn as far as the car goes. But uh, Kyle's doing a great job. We'll just get all we can. On this restart, Marty, let's watch the different lines, the 47 versus the 18. Kyle said he just can't get in that regular groove on this racetrack. And it will be interesting as uh, we will be going back to green flag racing here shortly on our ninth caution. One thing I did notice that on that last run, that just short run we had, was that Kyle Busch was running a whole different line than Marcus Ambrose. You can see he was just uh, basically the opposite line of Ambrose. So. Uh, I don't know if that's intentional well, or for vision. Could, well, could it also be because of the experience factor? This track is not that wet, so there there isn't that standing water down in turn one like there normally would be. And Marcus says, hey, I've got some grip down here. Let me take the short route. Yeah, I mean, Marcus knows a lot about this kind of racing and uh, be pretty smart to uh, watch what he's doing. And that turn one is the one you got to watch. I mean, obviously, Marcus is concerned about this restart. Hey, look, talking about some other drivers had a good day. Brad Keselowski spun out three times during this race. He's got himself all the way up to seventh. Brad's doing a good job out there. You know, we all know he's third in the points right now, not too far behind Carl Edwards. Right next to him is Jacques Villeneuve, uh, the favorite carrying the banners for the hometown Montreal fans. Dave, what's going on in their camp? Trent Owens giving him some last instructions. Of course, when they pass by the pit box here, they can uh, hear them hear each other better on the radio. So what are you telling him and how much car does he have left, including the brakes? <laughs> yeah, the brakes have been a problem on the dry, but the wet, it, the, the wet cools them off enough that it should be fine. Uh, I'm counting on his experience here in the wet to uh, hopefully gain some spots here. We get back going green. I was kind of excited to see it uh, rain. I thought that was our best shot to win. Um, kind of got screwed up on the strategy at the beginning of the race. Uh, just miscommunication between the spotter and driver and stuff. So. Um, looking for a good finish. Let's hope we get the Dollar General Chevrolet at least. I mean, Toyota up in the uh, top five. As he restarts and he's coming to you, he'll be on the right hand side on the inside behind Boris. Do you like that lane for him? No, we, we'd rather be on the right hand side. I mean, we're on the left right now, so um, the right hand side seems to be better for the second corner. Not necessarily the first one, but the second one. You need the inside lane to get going. All right, thank you, Trent. Shannon? Well, you don't really think of Paul Menard being a road course racer, but he has done an excellent job here today. You guys also had a really strong run going in Watkins Glen. Since we put the rain tires on, what, are you, what is your driver saying about that car? Uh, he hasn't really said a whole lot about it. He just said lack and grip, obviously. But uh, Paul's done this before. He's raced in the rain a little bit, so he's got a little bit of experience. He's hopefully have uh, one up on everybody else. But who knows what's going to happen here? You know, you get the 47, the 18 beating and banging on each other. So hopefully it'll turn out to be a good race here at the end. Yeah, it's really all in the driver's hands right now. What is it like for a crew chief sitting here watching all of this just take place on the racetrack? Yeah, that's what I kind of told Paul. I said, well, it's kind of up to you right now. It's, it's all in your balls in your court. So I think you can do it. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully these guys get racing in front of us and opens up a door for us. Have a lot of trust in your driver, the tires, and, of course, the car, guys. And as you finish up, we can tell you Antonio Perez will get the uh, lucky dog and get back on the lead lap. Uh, so that gives us a total now of 28 cars still on the lead lap here at Montreal. Oh my, the sun has broken back out. And that is the city of Montreal off in the distance across the St. Lawrence River as we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. And I still think about the fact that right now, if we didn't have these rain tires, we'd be waiting for another hour or an hour and a half drying this track with a bunch of jet dryers. But one thing we know for sure right now, eight laps to go, guys, this track is gonna dry real quick and it will start eating up these rain tires because they're awful soft tires compared to the regular tires that we run, the slick tires, I call it. So there are portions of the track already that are pretty dry and there's portions that are wet like you're seeing right there in the hairpin. But under the trees, through the S's, it's pretty dry. Did you notice, Marcus, when he came around, turn 10 there, he, he gave a little throttle to see how much wheel spin he was going to get? That's the experience that we're talking about. Now, there's one of those dry sections that you were talking about, Rusty. But I, you know what? There's, there's plenty of water around the rest of this track. I think these tires are going to go just fine all the way to the finish, as long as we stay green. The last thing we need is more, uh, more yellow flags. Andy, the thing I'd be wondering about, if I hit the dry, then hit the wet, what's that car going to do? It's going to have grip, no grip, grip, no grip. And That's why uh, you get paid the big bucks, man. <laughs> Got to make it work. I don't drive no more, Andy. <laughs> 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 I can sit up and talk about these guys. All right, that's the view out the back of Marcus's car. It is Ambrose, Kyle Busch in second, Andrew Ranger third, Edwards fourth, Menard fifth, 
That's your top five. And Kyle Busch has yet to lead a lap in this race. And remember, the only other race this year he has not led was Las Vegas. Getting ready to come down for the start. Pace truck has pulled off. Listen to these faithful fans here in Montreal. They're all on their feet as we get ready for another restart, ending our ninth record caution of the Nationwide Road Course Series. Green flag's out. Here we Green go. Flag, man. Oh, another good start for Ambrose. Right behind him, Kyle Busch. J.R. Fitzpatrick, he's going to have to stop now, which is a problem for him on that little island oh. right there. Yep, got, got some more action. That got another car turned around. Michael McDowell gets yep. spun around. Boy, that is really going to hurt J.R. Fitzpatrick. He was running in ninth position on the restart. Look out, Villeneuve trying to bull his oh. way to Whoa. Oh, we got Coleman in the tires with Kenny Wallace. Kenny gets a little nudge into Coleman. They both go off, but both are still running. No yellow. It is so hard to anticipate how slick that corner really is. Guys diving in there thinking it might stick and hit too much water. Yep, they're going to Max around. Pappas around off the oh. front bumper of Brad Keselowski. Oh, he's got to stay in that throttle so he can get stuck in that stuff, Andy. And he's still got a little momentum. Momentum well, is your friend in this situation. Cost him a ton of positions as well. And as he comes back out, there's contact oh. with a couple of cars. Doesn't look like anything major, though, as everybody still keeps going down that long straightaway. Seven laps to go, and these guys are just muscling themselves around here. See some smoke from another car in front of this group. Looks like that was Brad Coleman going by, but smoke coming off that car. Whoa, well, and oh, now no. another car gets some Brandon help. That's Brandon gone, and the 86 involved in that one potentially again. That would be Antonio Perez. So, Brendan, and you got to be careful when you get back on that Whoa, grass. Look, you can see right there in that shot, Kyle Busch is just about to overdo it right there on the throttle. Gets a little bit out of shape. That's Andrew Ranger in third, Carl Edwards in fourth, and there is the 66 turned around in turn number 10. So, Wallace has got his issues there again. Another car off to the right there. Can't seem to make out the number. And here comes Marcus Ambrose. And the caution is out once again. So number 10 I believe this. and listen to Marcus. I can't believe this. Every time he gets a good restart, we end up with another caution. And the caution we're hearing is for the 33 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. And there he is as he is stuck down in turn number one, never getting that car refired. So a tough break for Fitzpatrick because he had a very solid run. He won the Canadian tire race earlier today. Of course, that now seems like a long time ago. We were supposed to be off the air a half hour ago. <laughs> Does that Mark give you an Marcus idea? said this is the longest race of his <laughs> life. Yeah, welcome to the 24 hours of Montreal. Comes Brad Coleman in with a lot Boy. of body damage. Yeah. There's yeah. going to be a lot of work done in the sheet metal shop over the next few days. You got a feel for Brad Coleman right now. This was his last run in this particular car, the 20 car, really good car out of the Joe Gibbs stable. And, and he really did a great job today. He ran strong, but when this rain came and problems started happening, this track has been chewing cars up. He was 12th when this uh, problem occurred for him. And obviously it's gonna set him way back. There's a 33 getting pit, pa uh, pushed around. Being told the uh, 75 of Brett Rowe is going to be uh, getting the free pass. So he'll get back on the lead lap. That'll give us 29 cars, at least if Coleman can get fixed and back out before they get back around. See the dry spots there. I mean, it looks like we said this thing is really drying out quick, and this is going to make for a little better racing in some corners. The problem is, is when you leave the wet surface and you go to the dry surface and then back to the wet, that's when these cars come around they get out of control. And it's it's not the exact conditions you want for racing in the rain, that's for sure, because you've got too many obstacles out there, grip problems. I, I think the biggest problem is we, we got a few guys out there with the red mist. <laughs> I mean, they, they're just not giving in any quarter. They're not giving each other room. And uh, now this could take a while to push this car all the way around the racetrack if it doesn't fire. We got cars just tore to pieces out here. This left front fender and this car is wiped out. Half the field is destroyed. It's exciting to watch, I'll tell you, but man, they have tore some stuff up. 
It has been an expensive day for car owners. Well, while all this is going on, Andrew Ranger still finds himself uh, the third car in line behind Ambrose and Kyle Busch. Let's find out what's going on in his camp. Uh, Jamie? And Andrew Ranger shares Rusty Wallace's sentiments. He said on the radio right before we walked up here, he said, I can't believe NASCAR is letting them race. Everybody's wrecking everywhere. The good news was, though, Paul, you guys got to get some fuel. What do you think now? Are you guys going to be able to make it here another few laps? Yeah, we're good to go. Andrew, I'm just really impressed with what he's done today. He just every restart, he just keeps hitting his marks and he's real calm. Um, yeah, it's just a little crazy now. They're those guys in the back of the pack. It just looks like bumper cars back there. So um, but we'll be all right. We'll eat. We'll, however, it turns out, we're just going to keep doing our deal and uh, try to get us a good top five out of it. First time working together. You guys don't have that solid relationship yet, but how much are you able to coach your driver right now? Keep him calm and keep him on the track in the groove he's supposed to be in. I think we've done a good job today and um, you know, the communication's tough. We have a little bit of uh, would be better with more time, but but all in all, I think it's fine. He knows what he's doing out there and we'll uh, see what we can do. This team has had fast race cars the last few weeks. We'll see if it'll pay off and they can hang on to third, Dave. Pops Yuri's driver, Brad Keselowski, has a top 10 run going. And uh, Pops, based on yesterday morning's practice, when a semi-wet, semi-dry condition, how long do you think these tires can go before they really get out from under, Brad? Uh, they'll be they'll be fine. We uh, we ran a bunch on them yesterday and uh, had a whole lot of dry spots on the racetrack. Uh, basically, what that happens to them is they slide them and they just kind of chunk them out when they slide them. But uh, they'll be fine. I don't think we've got uh, enough laps to go here. We we'll have any tire problems. Hey, this is entertaining to watch at home. What's it like to watch up here? Well, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess they're doing what they need to do. But uh, we've lost the nose, the hood, and both sides of the car since they put the rain tires on. So uh, these guys have enough problems getting around these places when it's dry, much less when it's wet. Interesting perspective, Shannon. Well, down here with Doug Randolph, crew chief for Stephen Light. Uh, Stephen, you told me earlier today, practiced his car for Clint Boyer last season, but did not get any rain time. So how is he doing out there on the rain tires? Well, he's doing fine. Uh, we obviously got a little practice on rain tires the other day, and he's doing a great job in the holiday in uh, Chevrolet. It's definitely crazy out there right now. Uh, I'm sure it's exciting to watch, but I would hate to be out there. We're just, you know, you run good all day long, and uh, you're just at anybody's mercy right now, and it's uh, it's fun to watch, but uh, I don't think it'd be fun to be in that. Well, you say it's crazy out there right now. What is your driver telling you? Because, I mean, that's just your interpretation of what must be going on out there. Yeah, absolutely. He's just trying to be smart and not get into anybody and hope nobody gets into him, but they're just slipping and sliding out there. and. Uh, you know, everybody wants to race and do well, but everybody also wants to be able to load it up on the truck at the end of the day, too. Stephen Wallace having a great, I mean, Stephen Light having a great run here today, guys. Yeah, they're going to load them up on the trucks, but they may need a hook to be able to do it. All right. As we get ready to go back to Green Flag Racing, here's uh, some of the action that has transpired. And there you can see what happened to Stephen Wallace. He got a little assist from the 34. And then, oh, ouch, that's where Brad Coleman got some more damage. He had been in a couple incidents already. And then uh, pick up uh, the 88 coming across. He's got the inside line, but not quite enough room there. And Brad gets into the one car of Max Pappas, gets Max turned around. <laughs> it's comical to watch, guys. They're just tearing to pieces out of these things. One thing for sure, this is the last road race of the year. Generally, these teams bring these cars home. They change some fenders around a little bit, kind of prepare them for the next season. Today, they're going to have to take them home, take the whole entire body off, and throw it in a garbage can because there's nothing left on these things. Now they'll have some parts to rebuild with, but <laughs> they're not going to have cars left. Most of these guys aren't. Okay, this is a 2.7-mile circuit, and there's going to be four laps to go when we get back to green flag racing and there still the fans as they are waiting to see if their guy can pull off a victory being the 32. Is there not like a uh, spin roll out like like there is every week you spin out like five eight cars to go home that's the way it should be for stations adapt that USAC rule two spins in your row. <laughs> <laughs> that really is rules at some racetracks. If you spin uh, twice, you have to come in the pits and you're done. Sort of like the Little League 10 run rule. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you have that many, you ought to go home. They're up through turn 10. Still got a bit of a ways to go. 
to get back to start finish. Let's reset it for you. If you've got uh, Ambrose and Kyle Busch in the first row, then it'll be Ranger and Edwards. Paul Menard, Boris said in row number three, Villeneuve and Brad Keselowski in the fourth row. In the fifth row will be Stephen Light and Alex Tagliani. So the Quebec faithful have two that they are really rooting for. And of course, uh, Rangers in that group. So we ought to put three up in that group. So three out of the top 10. And uh, that's why you see a lot of these people still on their feet, still supporting their guys. Well, anybody saying we're going to see another crash yet? We're going to be able to get this thing home, Andy? Come on, you're, you understand that stuff. Well, I hope they calm down and race it to the end, but I say they'll, they'll, they'll probably crash again. I don't know if we'll see another caution, but they'll definitely be spinning. We are going to think good thoughts. How about that? I'm a positive thinker, but I'm pretty realistic also. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weather has cleared off in the distance, so, uh, you know. If we have to, we can run into just almost darkness, which is well, that's only the next about thing, that's the next thing that's going to get us. <laughs> it's only about a half hour <laughs> away. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lights out on the pace truck. Marcus is going to be on the left side of your screen. There he is, driver's right. As they come down for the straightaway, he's he's done the same pattern every time. Slows way down right before the green flag and then hammers the throttle. See if he does the same routine. Now, Kyle's seen this act before. Kyle's right there with him. There he goes. Green flag out, and here comes Carl taking a peek to the outside. Cannot get any ground there. Andrew Ranger on the high side. He's got some issues. He's trying to hang on. A little further back. Oh, we don't even make it through one. The 66 involved again. Couple other cars as well. The 41 right of Stanton Barrett. Looks like Justin Marks. Yep. Uh, Michael Annette was also involved. And it looked like maybe even uh, Michael McDowell in the 96. McDowell. And everybody gets refired except we're still and waiting Justin for that Marks last car. Looks like he's yep. rolling. Justin looks like he is going to get back out. So no caution as of now. We're still racing. I think right now with four laps to go, I just keep running them. And if they run up across debris, just drive over top of the well, debris. Marcus Barr said, said gets into the gravel pit, manages to get enough wheel traction to get out of it. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe. Keep it going. Oh, Keep it going. We got a little tread on these tires now, so you That's get a little true. more grip. That's true. So Boris loses a lot of positions, but at least he's a back runner. Carl shoving and, Kyle. <laughs> There's the chrome horn. Excuse oh, yeah, me, he's me. all over Kyle. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Yeah, these two are racing for the points. You got to remember that. Those Down are two the guys. Straightaway. We've been following them all year long. Heading for 10. Kyle's got the inside line here. Oh, Marcus gets oh, wide. Marcus Ambrose gets in there too hot. He's going to come out with the lead. But the gap has narrowed. Now, speaking of there, the track just narrowed up down there in turn 10. Ranger now just about a car length back. Carl does. Managed to get around Kyle, and Mark now the caution is on your out left. again. So, unfortunately, oh man, Jason Leffler has got all kinds of issues. Right after turn two, and I'm trying to figure out how in the heck he could have ended up over there. And there's Justin Marks also. Don't know if he got it. Well, there's another he, car involved as well. Well, Justin Marks really never got going over there from that incident he had. He tried to get out of there, and he did. And this is as far as he made it. He was stuck in there between one and yeah. two. All right, let's go back and see if we can sort this out. Take a look. This was the original incident. Back in the middle. See, they're going three wide. Look at Stevens already in the grass skating. He's going to meet up with these guys in the middle yeah. of this corner. That's taking a, out of three or four. <clears throat> Wouldn't you call that bowling for dollars on that? That was definitely his mistake right there. He tried to make it three wide getting into turn one and caused a problem, that's for sure. But we've had some other problems at other parts of this racetrack just now with Boris Set and guys like that. Okay. So let's, let's see what happens here. We're on board with Steven. Well, he had the contact with the 05 of Victor Gonzalez. And Keep her going, keep her going, get her going right there. It's easy for the crew to say he was able to get it going. And there's Marcus Ambrose. You see him slipping wide. And there goes uh, the 81 of Tagliani. He gets a boot from behind. The 27 goes around. Jason Keller goes around. Yep. You see. And then there's Eric Darnell into Kenny Wallace in the 28. 
Well, I've called a lot of broadcasts since I've been with you guys. Just got to be the craziest <laughs> one I think I've ever called. We still haven't seen exactly what happened to the left one. Yeah, it, uh, we're still trying to I figure out what happened I don't think we have enough cameras there. to cover all the action we had on that lap. Now, that's Justin Marks, and uh, he's A-OK. -okay. Going to take the ride. Waves to the fans. Not the guy that looked real good. Justin did a great job all through yesterday's practice, and good little road racer he is. Crew going to work on the 66 as they're trying to check and see how many cars we now have off this track. Man, just 13. look at that carnage. 13 in all are either off or behind the wall. See Stanton Barrett trying to make his way back to pit road with some flat tires. Still moving. Yeah, Steven's shown in 22nd right now. Let's go back and show you. Here's what happened to Jason Leffler. Yeah, he's got sparks coming out the back. I heard the motor kick yeah, off right hear there. It just, yeah. just quit. And now here you see. That's where Steven comes yeah. across. But now you still see the Leffler slow. Out of, he's over in that other lane yeah. now. That's the pit out lane. I don't think anybody hit him uh, except right a little bit now. there. But. He's basically just trying to get out of everybody's way. So that's what it He's was. He's probably got a flat tire. We saw the spark, so uh, he had a flat tire. Couldn't get out of the way. Andy, what about the motor just shutting off all of a sudden, though? You heard it's just like almost a plug check where a driver just turns the ignition off. We saw a lot of sparks. He wants to stay in the car. Maybe he can get it refired. Oh, we're waiting to... Get a report from uh, the team, see if they uh, had any communication with him as far as uh, what's wrong with the car, or if he's able to limp it back to pit lane, or if he's done. Uh, Jason Luffler right now is fourth in our point standings in a nationwide series point standings. He's, uh, he's got a good margin behind him and a good margin ahead of him, so it won't hurt him in the points whatsoever. But it's got to be frustrating because he's had a top five car throughout the day, <coughs> and everybody's just shaking their head. Uh, there to push you well, while we've got a chance, let's talk to one of our two in-race reporters, Carl Edwards. Go ahead, Rusty. Carl, Rusty Wallace, ESPN, you got us? I got you, Rusty. Well, buddy, I don't know about you, but I've never seen nothing like this in a long time. What's a, How do you negotiate in all these problems out there? It's crazy, man. Uh, with a name like Rusty, I figured you'd know lots about the rain, but... Uh... Man, this is, uh, this is insane. You know, right now it's drying out. I was just asking Dan, I don't know how long these Goodyear uh, rain tires will last. They're, they're great on our city financial Ford. They've done a great job with the tire, but um, we'll see how durable they are, I guess, right here, because it's drying out. Well, we're all watching you, Carl, Kyle, Kyle Bush and Carl Edwards out there running side by side, racing each other for the points. Uh, you guys got pretty tight in a couple of those corners. Yeah, we're, uh, we're racing, just racing hard, pretty fun. All right, buddy. Keep it on the course. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Rusty. And there you see the exterior view of Carl's car. He's in one of the few that are in better shape than most. That's uh, about one of the cleanest cars we've got out there. Yeah, he is, he's got that car in good shape. We talked about Marcus Ambrose up front earlier. He's got a good car in good shape, too. Little little right rear damage, not much at all. Yeah, well, his... his best thing is he's been out in front for 57 laps <laughs> that's that's why he's looking pretty good but uh trying to fun day give me a great piece if we don't win it it won't be for lack of better until the round comes to us they should be proud all of you really proud about what we've done that's marcus uh giving the crew it's deserved props but uh this one may finally come in to fold it's going to take a lot longer than he anticipated a lot longer than any of us anticipated but the uh, next time by there will be uh two laps to go so it means we should be uh down to two the next time by there's the 38 let's uh get an update from jamie it is a broken transmission. That's why he stayed in to get pushed back. His day is over. Marty, tough break because he started 22nd, but he got up as high as second, and it was a good run. Ended early for Jason Leffler. All right, thanks for the update there as uh, they're trying to push him back. 
Yeah, it's a long pushback right there. I mean, you get so close, three or four laps from the end, and this happens to you, lose a transmission. But, you know, they're probably sliding and wheel hopping, all kind of stuff going on out there that really hurts the transmission, hurts the drivetrain. You know, you see some of the ripple strips there. Jumping over those things really hurts the car. I got to believe that just some of these cars are just flat wore out. They're, they're just beat falling up. apart. They're just, their tongues are hanging out. Yeah. They're like, I want to go home. We saw the sparks flying out of this car on the end car, but uh, must have been something else. Like I say, drive train related. It uh, went in that corner. It's kind of like a sitting duck. No power. Well, as we're taking a look at the progress of trying to get this car back, let's uh, give some props to some other teams that have uh, done well. And check in to 10th place. Coming into view, you'll see the 23, and that is Jean-Francois de Moulin. And, uh, oh, we've got a little rain props going. There he is. And the nose of that car, he's had several incidents, but somehow uh, this man from Quebec has managed to fight his way back to 10th position. And you guys were worried about having to say his name, so who wants to take a whack? Well, I'm going to let you do that. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jean-Francois Dumoulin. There you go. You got and it. There he goes, the 23 and car. Now, let's check out Max Pappas. Right here. He's been cleaning, been doing a little housekeeping there. He's trying to get the outside of the windshield clean. He had a stick out there with uh, something on the end of it. There you go. There. You see, a little mop. There we go. Thanks, Max. <laughs> Trying to get some vision. After last year, a lot of these guys knew they needed to put something inside the car in case the inside fogged up or the outside. And actually, Max is doing a good job holding on to that thing. First time I ever saw that, we were doing the uh, 12 Hours of Sebring. And uh, Hans Stuck, great driver from Germany, uh, he was in a BMW and literally would be going down the straightaway, wiping the inside with a squeegee that they had provided him. He'd shift, get on the next straightaway, wipe it some more, because <laughs> the defoster system, the defogger system, just totally went uh, south on him. And uh, he just handled it. And they ended up finishing uh, second that day. You know, talking about some other guys that have done a great job out there. What about Alex Tagliani? He's up to seventh right now. He's done a good job. We've been talking about Brad Keselowski after about three spins. He's in six right now. Jamie, what you got down there? Dave Ingram standing on the wall with your boys, working with Alex Tagliani Very for the exciting. first time in NASCAR. You guys worked your way up to seventh. How have you fought through everything today? We've come from the rear three times, and Alex is really pumped up now. We struggled yesterday in qualifying in the rain. It's pretty exciting. I mean, it really is. He's, he's really pumped up in the car. We're trying to keep him calm, and he's saying how these NASCAR guys beat and bang so hard compared to the kart guys. It's pretty exciting. You guys are an underfunded team. You look at your setup here. You guys threw yourselves together. What would a top 10 finish mean to you guys? It's really big. McDonald Motorsports has had one eighth place. It's been years ago. Our best for the year is 14th, so this is pretty exciting. All the guys are all pumped up. So You're pumped up. Keep your boys together. Keep your boy in seventh. Alex Tagliani doing a heck of a job in his debut in the NASCAR nationwide series yeah you don't beat and bang when you're in those open wheel cars he has a one champ car win back in 2004 that was at road america yeah this is randy mcdonald you saw him standing up there without the uniform that's the one of the owners of the team or the owner of the team there he is right there and there he is and and, and we should point out his driver alex tagliani won in a toyota atlantic race here at the uh, circuit Gilles villeneuve back in 1999 so uh, he has tasted the champagne. He won't today, but uh, as we pointed out, this would be an excellent run for that team. I'll say anything's possible. He's running, well, he's running in the top 10 <laughs> with his green, white checker. Anything's possible. There he is right along fellow countrymen and Quebecer. That's the 32 of Jacques Villeneuve. This will be uh, our seventh green, white checker of the year. And here are the others. Shows you the Biffle did real well at Las Vegas and Phoenix. David Reagan at Talladega, Matt Kenseth at Darlington, Clint Boyer at Daytona, and Reagan again at Bristol. That was a great run out of David Reagan at Bristol just a couple weeks ago or a week ago. I watched that one. That kid did a great job out there. This also will be our second green-white checker here in the history of Montreal. The first one was back in 07, and it is actually now the fourth total for the road courses. Lights are out on the pace truck. Two laps. Next time by, we hope. <laughs> we think. Well, this is it. This is a one attempt, so no matter what. I know. Uh, this is I know. it. I know. But it's, uh, it has been a long day. We, and all of you that have stayed with us throughout this, we do appreciate it. It has been a challenge not only uh, for the drivers, but uh, 
literally everyone, especially those fans in the stands, they suffered through the one rainstorm that we had. Well, Marty, I'm sure there's a little bit of eye rolling going on back at, back at home, and a lot of the fans are watching this broadcast about what are they doing in this rain, but one thing for sure, we have made history in the Nationwide Series. Last year, racing in the rain. This year, qualifying in the rain. The Nationwide Series has for sure been the guinea pigs of whether you can race in the rain. And it can be done. I mean, it, it, some of this is just a, a question of, you know, the guy's not getting too over aggressive. You've got to, you know, make adjustments or you're going to end up in the wall. Fans down in turn number 10. We still have at this stretch 26 cars on the lead lap. We talked about the fact there were 13. See a lot of spins right here in the hairpin as you come down in the turn 10. That's a great opportunity and we've seen spinning out all day long there. But now they're getting ready to get on this long front straightaway. And Andy, you try messing around there. You hurt yourself because we talked earlier. They're 175 miles an hour getting down into turn 13. Another good place to pass. That's where these cats have got to be careful. And even yesterday in, the, in a, really a lot of water, a lot of rain, they were going 160 plus miles an hour going down that straightaway. In the rain. In the rain. And, and let me update it. It is 14 cars now that are either off or out of this race. So as we get ready for our one and only final attempt here at the green white checker, we do know this race will finally come to a conclusion here in Montreal. The question we don't know is who's going to take the victory. If uh, justice is served, it has to be Marcus Ambrose. This guy has been phenomenal today. He has led 58 laps. He led the most laps the last two years here, came up short both times. <laughs> you know what? Marcus just does not deserve this many caution flags. Well, he's been so good. In 07, it was Robbie Gordon that denied him. Robbie to this day will tell you he actually won that race. Last year was Marcus's problem. He got caught for speeding going into pit lane cost him dearly. He had an eight second lead at the point. What will happen now as we get ready to go back to green flag racing? It's Andrew Ranger right alongside. And again, Marcus gets a great restart. Ranger right behind him, pinches Carl, off Carl. 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 Carl then gets into him. And Carl. Carl's oh, going to spin around. Three other cars Big spin wild. around, four cars. This looks like 2007. One. All these guys are still trying to race each other because the caution is not out yet. And there's a lot of positions to be gained right now. So far, still no caution. Marcus pulls away. Carl's in second. Still no caution. And this is what Carl Edwards needed to happen out of Kyle Busch to run him down the points just a little bit. This could be a big gain for Carl today in the points. So then with that problem down there, they have a minute and a half to sort that out and let those cars get moving before these leaders get back to that, the scene of that last uh, little mess up. Staying a little bit wider here and you can see some smoke coming out. There is uh, Jacques Villeneuve. That's Keselowski. Keselowski's going to pick up some points. Tony Reigns. Then on back, I'm still looking for Kyle Busch. Has he gotten back into the action here? He just here? came into the shot under the bridge. Right behind Stephen Wallace, here comes Kyle Busch. So Kyle has lost a lot of positions here on this green-white checker, and we look like we're going to go the rest of the distance because the caution never came out. You see uh, Dumoulin there, his car smoking heavily through the hairpin. Yeah, he's got some problems. Everybody else trying to tiptoe through this corner. A couple cars getting wide, but holding on. Meanwhile, here is your race leader, Marcus Ambrose, heading down for turn 13. Into 14 will be the left-hander, and he'll have one lap to go to finally win a race that has eluded him for the past two years here at Montreal. And this is going to be the longest last lap of his life. I mean, this has been so hard for him to get around this track with all these caution flags, but he looks great right now. But Carl Edwards, don't count him out. He's closed in on him. He knows exactly. Listen to the fans cheering these guys as they go by. Marcus Ambrose has been flawless all day long. He just has to make a few more corners to get this thing home. Carl Edwards trying to do everything he can to get close for one more final dive on him, but I don't think it's going to happen. Marcus has just been that superior today. I'll tell you, Carl Edwards not letting him get away from him too far. Now, this track's drying out pretty good right now. Carl's getting some good bite on these dry sections of the racetrack and actually running them down just a little bit. Looks like he has closed the gap. 
Long way to go still when you think about it in Marcus Ambrose's eyes. Heading down into eight. That's the final time there. So only one more real good opportunity for him. The Carl Edwards is right there. I mean, one mistake by Ambrose. Last Carl Edwards win this thing. Down in the hairpin here, Andy. This is where he's got to try to get it done. If he's going to dive on him, it could be here. And he tried. He's made a move he's here. Going to go high, low on him. Right off the corner. Can he, Can he get, get the, the grip? It's the grip. He's trying to fight that grip off the corner. All right. He now gets in the bumper. He's pushing Ambrose. Yeah. Now he's got it. one more chance going into 13. Marcus taking the defensive line down the middle, saying, if you're going to go, you're going to tell me where you're going first. Here he comes into 13. Well, Carl Edwards is doing everything he can right here. And oh, oh, Marcus, big time curve. Here comes Edwards. Edwards. makes one mistake all day and it's going to cost him the win. The last lap hits the ripple strips, goes oh. airborne and loses the race all by himself. Andrew Ranger comes home third, Jacques Villeneuve fourth, Brad Keselowski yes. in fifth. Time, Unbelievable. You got to feel so bad for Marcus. That means the world to me. That means the world to me. Thank you. Well, you got to hand it to Carl Edwards, but oh, what a heartbreaker for him. Oh, absolutely. Heartbreaker for Marcos Ambrose. So you can see how much this means to Carl Edwards, though. This is a big, big win for him. Two years in a row, Marcus's mistake is going to cost him victory. He led 60 laps. Carl was just pressuring him so hard, never did touch him, but got so close to him. Man, when you're leading, you got a mirror full of a driver like Carl Edwards, makes you drive harder. Just Take another hard. look at it. You see, he's trying to defend that corner, and he goes in a little bit shallow, and that puts him offline. You see him jump over the curb in the last corner. Oh, what a heartbreak. Ambrose has led 125 of the 199 laps run here at Montreal. That is 62%, but he has never been first across the stripe. And he is going to be living that moment for a long time. Well, he was trying to put a, a defensive move getting into ten, uh, turn 13, and that put him offline for 14. Tell you what, that's what makes dream come true to win a road course race. That's awesome. And to beat a guy like that, that's awesome. Now, Carl knows he just beat one of the best, if not the best, road racer in the business. And that's his first on the road course, his third win of 09 and 23rd win in 166 starts. Kyle heading to the transport. He comes home in 10th position today and obviously not happy with the deal that ended up transpiring down in turn one. Well, Tony Rain's got a great finish, finished sixth. Uh, all this action going on. Bill Newt came up fourth. Just a lot of good runs. And you see Michael McDowell, 11th place in the uh, Keselowski family-owned car. Dumoulin also had a good run coming home in seventh. Stephen Light eighth. Brendan gone ninth. Kyle Busch, as we pointed out, in tenth. And McDowell. McDowell in a car that wasn't even. It's a. It's an oval co track car. He comes home in eleventh position. What a day. What a day for a lot of people. Some good. Some not so good.